Pickleball, I think the sky's the limit. It's the fastest growing sport. There's really no ceiling. Paris Todd. Hunter Johnson, Simone Jardine. Andre Diascu. Megan Buddy Ape Johnson. Pickleball is my everything. It's pickleball, baby. Have fun. Oh my goodness! For more than two centuries, Cincinnati has been known as the Queen City. From engineering marvels that span the Ohio River to fountains designed to rival the grandeur of European wealth and sporting venues that beckon one and all to enjoy an afternoon of America's favorite pastime. Cincinnati prides itself on being a hub where big ideas and celebrations of culture always have a home. This week, one of the fastest growing facets of American culture hit the banks of the Ohio River with the APP Tour and pickleball players flooding into Cincinnati from around the country. More than 900 participants making their way here to Ohio to play in the APP Vlasic Classic. The fifth stop of the APP 2023 Tour had more than 900 total participants, 700 amateurs, 200 professionals, 500 more participants than last year's tournament and all of them fighting for the chance to be right here right now on championship sunday i'm aj mccord alongside chad edwards and dominic catalano but the week has not been without its challenges as well we had rain delays a lot of weather coming into cincinnati but the best have come through and made it to championship sunday yeah, the, the dreaded rain. We had more rain delays yesterday. So far, right now, fingers crossed, uh, no rain in the future for today. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's been difficult for these players this this week. Um, the stopping, the starting, the, we've, we've been outdoors, we've been indoors. You know, it's, it's, there's been a lot of, a lot of difficulties, and, and, but the, we've still gotten through it. Yes. And that's the, that's the big part. And you'd think like some of the top players maybe, you know, get some upsets here, but it's a testament to them that they've been able to stay focused throughout the weekend with all the delays going from outside to inside, dealing with all the elements. And you're seeing a, a great championship Sunday set for us today. Let's get you set for Championship Sunday and what we have ahead. We're going to start with two players who are incredibly familiar to playing on Championship Sunday. is Hunter Johnson coming through the winner's bracket in men's singles. Yeah, like you said, Hunter Johnson coming through the winner's side this week, two weeks ago in Sacramento. He had to fight his way through the back draw, but playing lights out on Thursday, really putting pressure on the field and again going up against Brother Yates. Yeah, and it's the, the script that's flipped this weekend as Yates will have to come back out of the consolation draw. He did do that, and he battled his way back, losing to Sobek in the main side, but then beating him in the bronze medal match in three games. On the women's side, Salome Davidze was not in Sacramento, but she picked it up here in Cincinnati like she never left, working her way through the women's singles winner's bracket with relative ease. Yeah, Davidze looks to be on cruise control this weekend, not dropping a game on her way to championship Sunday. And with the field kind of wide open this weekend, she's taking full advantage as she looks to get back on top of the podium. Yeah, and she's going up against Jenna Hessett, who is a new face to Championship Sunday. But this is a rematch of the winner's bracket final, and Hessett really didn't put a whole lot of pressure in Davidze on that one. Played a tough one against Amanda Hendry in the bronze to get back here, so she's definitely going to try and come out and, and get some redemption for that winner's bracket final loss. It wouldn't be Championship Sunday in women's doubles without these two, Simone Jarjim and Paris Todd. Yeah, that always seems to be the constant in women's gold medal match, and it's Simone Jarjim and Paris Todd making their way through the winner bracket undefeated and looking to make it a five out of five on Championship Sunday this season on the APP Tour, taking home their fifth gold medal possibly. Yeah, and that was that, that women's doubles winner's bracket final yesterday was part of that transition from inside to outside, or I should say outside to inside. Uh, Bar and Fudge almost 
able to knock Zha Jing and Todd off yesterday. They were up 8-3 in the second game and really put the pressure on Zha Jing and Todd. So look for Bar and Fudge to come out and be extremely aggressive today and play some fast-paced pickleball. Cannot wait for that one. Another great one from the men's doubles. Andre Diescu and Rob Nunnery pairing up for the first time and working out pretty well because they're playing today. Yeah, I mean, Nunnery and, and Diascu have really created a solid, a solid partnership this week. They weren't really tested a whole lot, but they're just playing so clean, and they're, they're, the ability to, to create opportunities is, is really great to see. And Long and Sincola looking for a fast start today, considering three of their four wins that they had went three games while they dropped game one in every one of those. And that bronze medal match against McNulty and Mick was the same way. They had to win games two and three, but they played incredibly well. Nunner and Diascu going to play twice today here on Championship Sunday, along with Susanna Barr and Rob Nunnery. They're pairing up for the mixed doubles gold medal match here today. I mean, what's there to say? It's another Championship Sunday mixed gold match, and here we see Susanna Barr again, but this time it's with a different partner, and that's a very hot Rob Nunnery, as you mentioned earlier, Chad. And Nunnery's playing extremely well. He's being super active. He's moving around well and he's just not showing any signs of slowing down. Yeah, and, and partner, part of that partner mix-up or, or switch-up, uh, we're seeing Diascu again in a mixed doubles championship Sunday, this time with Alex Trung. They were tested a couple of times, went to three games against Broderick and Whitwell, and then an extremely tough bronze medal match against Johnson and Todd. So they're looking to come out and really try to test bar and nunnery that they didn't really get that through throughout the bracket so it's going to be a fantastic set of matches we have coming your way here in cincinnati for championship sunday we've mentioned the weather the delays the change of venues that we've had to work through all week to get here but today right now 63 degrees and the johnson brothers are looking to find their shot at gold we'll be right back to see who wins We save time when we buy and book online at DiscountTire.com. Which means more time Wait, take for... Take a check. Kyle, it's pickleball. Every time. Zero, zero, two. Get 30% shorter average wait time when you buy and book online at DiscountTire.com. The APP is presented by Yola, Franklin, Blair Rebecca, and Pickleball United. Here on Championship Court, our first match of Championship Sunday. It's going to be Hunter Johnson versus Yates Johnson. They joke around and they warm up together and all that, but when all said and done, they both want to win here. Oh, well disguised ball down the line there from Yates. What a point there from the Johnson brothers. And there you have it. Game one goes to Yates Johnson.
forcing Yates to move, and it worked. Hunter Johnson takes game two. Brings us to game and match point. And gets it to go. Gates Johnson has won his first men's singles gold medal. I mean, I've been waiting all year for this, you know. He's gotten a couple golds over me, and I finally got him back. So it feels good to get my first one, first gold, and first one of the year. So I'm happy about that. And so here we are again. Hunter Johnson versus Yates Johnson. It's the third time they're playing each other for gold in men's singles this season. First one went to Hunter in Daytona. Yates won in Sacramento, and here they are again. Who is going to get the tiebreaker here at the APP Vlasic Classic in Cincinnati? What do you guys think is going to be the biggest key of who has the edge today? Well, again, we saw the difference in the game strategy of Yates Johnson in Sacramento. He played slower. He was playing drops, and Hunter wants to play faster. So we'll see if Yates can keep that up this weekend or today, actually, if he can slow the game down. I mean, it's not a bad start right there. No, not at all. <laughs> it's a nice two-hander for the winner. And so we're underway. Yates Johnson with the serve. Yates Johnson with the first point of this championship Sunday. Looking to defend his Sacramento gold. I think, I think the biggest thing for Yates here, and especially having to come back and, and he's going to have to double dip, is he has to stay composed. He, I think more so against his brother. More so against his brother. Hunter has that ability to get into his head, and you see, you see yeah. Yates really uh, at times kind of fall apart in certain situations. Ooh. This is just an incredible start here for Yates early on. Has not made a mistake yet. Good ball move here. Feels like he's changing the Four pace zero. of these points pretty well. So he still has the serve, and it's 4-0. We're at 5 0, and Hunter hasn't even served yet. 5 0. Side out. He'll get a chance now, though, but not before Yates puts up five quick points here in this first game. And like you mentioned, he did come through Zero the back five. draw. So if Yates goes on to win the two out of three here to 11, he will have to come back and win that decisive game to 15. Yeah, Yates couldn't have drawn up a better start here. 5-0 on his first Five serve, zero. and then a really quick side out. Side out. Hunter Johnson with a chance to put his first point zero on the board five. here. Wow, what a ball there from Yates Johnson as he tracks this down. It looked like Hunter was going to be in control, but Yates runs this down after this backhand volley. And it just is a missile cross court of forehand. Point. Friendly roll off the net there for Yates Johnson, which seems like sometimes everything just is going your way, and that's certainly the way it is for Yates Six Johnson zero. early on here in game one of this gold medal match. Oh, and right now you just have Yates Johnson leaning into balls too. That two-hander he comes in and hits. He's Seven moving zero. forward as he hits this. Great technique. Side out. And then he dumps one in the net on the surf. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. No, no. But another, a good start. Scores five on the first. Gets a quick side out. Zero Two on the seven. second. visibly frustrated is Hunter right now is can't get anything started. 7-0. Wow. A 
of all the ways that I saw this gold medal match starting, this is not one of them that I would have predicted. Just in terms of the competition between these two is always so fierce. And they know each other so well that it feels like it's really hard for them to go on these extended runs against the other just because of that familiarity. So when you know each other so well, obviously, twin brothers know each other very well, practice, drill, play together. They know each other's game pretty much inside and out. It comes down to execution. And right now, that's exactly what Yates is doing. He's playing so clean. The unforced errors are almost nil right now. And every ball he's hitting, he's hitting crisp. He's hitting low to the net, or low, right low over the net. And he's just making and executing all of his shots right now. And Hunter just can't find a rhythm. This is a, certain, a, a similar situation to what we had in Daytona. You weren't there in Daytona. It was, it was Dom and I. But uh, Yates got up. I think I think at that time it was seven zero, maybe eight one, uh, and something happened. Somehow Hunter got in his head, and then and that's what I was talking about. Like things, things went uh, a, a little crazy there for a second, and he started spraying some balls. He started going for too much, or or playing to not lose once he gets up. So what he has to do right here is just go out and continue putting the pressure on and 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 playing the style that's gotten him to this point right now. But there you have back-to-back -back sort yep. of unforced errors where he did spray the ball a little bit wide, a little bit long. Exactly what you were talking about. So Hunter Johnson is on the board here on Championship Sunday in this men's singles gold medal match. One eight. One eight. Good control there from Yates, and again, he could easily overhit a couple of those balls. He sets up that ball winner right there on the ball Eight previous one. by just flipping it down and at the feet. Out. Side out. And then the serve sails long, so it's a side out. One eight. Yeah, one. nice step up and roll cross court there from Hunter Johnson. Yo, know, the thing that, that Hunter does so well is that he can change speeds, but a lot of the time Two, is that drop that really gets that easier ball back and kind of creates an angle. Side out. Nice Ernie right there by Yates Johnson, but, you know, again, it seems like Yates in very good control here, not Eight making two. too many unforced errors. Oh, wow. That's a clean oh, winner on a, a return. Clean backhand cross court winner. <laughs> That'll help. Two, eight. Oh, wow. Point. And I was going to, I wanted to compliment him really quick because that first Next. volley was beautiful. Perfectly set up. And just wanted to do the same on that second one, but just overhits it. Three, eight. Uh, eerily <laughs> similar to Daytona. <laughs> I was thinking the same exact thing. <laughs> and I was going to say the same exact thing because it's exactly what it is, Chad. It's, yeah. It was. I think it was 7-0. Yeah. This time it was 8-0. Oh, man. Oh, just wide. But that's part of that setup from Hunter right there. Drops it wide, gets that ball middle. He tried to go a little too fine there with the passing shot. Yates looking to stop this little 4-0 run that his brothers put together. Oh, Changed his mind. He was going to rip gonna that. He's going to go down the line. Yep. Was like, ah, it's not there. Tries to go cross court and drop. But again, when you have that made up in your mind, to change your mind and change your motion and change everything about that. Very difficult. So good out. placement there, though, by Yates Johnson getting behind Hunter. So a side out here. Yeah, good control there from Yates. Hunter not able to keep that roll low enough. Eight, and you're kind of stuck in the middle of the court. Nothing. Nothing you can really do once that ball floats. And that will stop the 4 nothing run from Hunter Johnson. Yates getting his point on the board here. So it's 
9-4, puts him two points away from taking game one. That was the that was the down the line. Yeah, he left some uh, tape on the court right there. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> that was the down the line that Yates was going to hit previously, but you know we talked about he changed his mind and tried to go for the roll. That time, fully committing to it. Sets up game point. And that one Changed just mine too, right there, because he looked like he was going to go around the post and tries to flip back over, but couldn't adjust. So Yates Johnson putting together an incredibly impressive game one, really having a lot of control, a lot of good ball movement, getting the better of Brother Hunter here in game one, 11 to four. So we'll pick up game two when we come back. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the APP Tour. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the APP Tour. The Pro XR Pickleball Paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. Pro XR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. Pro XR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. Hey, it's Hunter Yates Johnson here. We're down here in Cincinnati, Ohio for the APP Vlasic Classic. We're excited to be here. It's a beautiful venue. It's really unique. Uh, a lot of vibrant things going on in the city and we can't wait to uh, see what it's all about. We had a great event take place today. We invited the Special Olympics to come on out, and we taught 12 great players how to play pickleball. We gave them paddles, and everyone was just at a level 10 of excitement, and we had so much fun. And it was just kind of a great way to introduce pickleball to a whole new group of players. Back here for game two between Hunter and Yates Johnson. Yates Johnson getting the better of his brother in game one. And starts off strong here in game two as well. You guys were talking about Daytona, how that was almost identical to the way it started there. Yates with a big lead, then Hunter coming back. Has to be in the back of his mind as an athlete, right? Yeah, I mean, again, it was he was up 8-0, and then all of a sudden it's 8-4 here. He's like, oh no, is it Daytona all over again? It has to be in the back of your mind, because you know, athletes like this, they don't forget zero, stuff like zero. that. And you know you want to, but you don't. Especially against your twin. Yeah, exactly. Especially yeah. against your twin. <laughs> because you know, like you guys talk about all the time, we see them joking, playing together, having a great zero, time. Zero. But when you, they get on the court, game on. 
Nice inside out forehand there from Yates. So something I was just thinking about right now. Tell me. This is the only event for the Johnson boys this Sunday. It is. Which is yeah. odd. Odd compared to the first four stops on the tour. Point. I mean, he's just, Yace is just hitting everything just so clean right now. Like, there's no, he's not off. He's not hitting balls wildly long. The Two ones zero. he is hitting long, he's just missing. But if you if you <laughs> see Hunter, goes, yeah. Geez. <laughs> if you look at Yates right now, Yates plays his best when he's in this smooth, controlled, almost effortless movement, motion, everything else. Where it, where it, that's when he's hitting those clean balls. Yeah. When there's a little bit of pressure and feet stop moving too quick. Hunter just throwing his arms up after that one because again, Yates finding he, the corner. He almost laughed. And you mentioned this is the only time that we're going to see them today. The two play doubles together, obviously, eliminated in that competition, the men's doubles yesterday. And then both of them eliminated in mixed doubles as well. So this is a big opportunity for one of them to come home with a gold. And right now, Yates looks like he's got his eye on the prize. And commentator Chris, my bad. <laughs> it's all, it's all, it's I think all, all three of all us three were of us, thinking yeah. of it because it was 5-0. Yeah. Zero, five. Throws him in the middle. Nice ball there from Hunter, and he gets on the board here in game two. It's the last minute paddle change. One five. Change of the angle right there. Freezing Yates right in the middle of the court. But that one he sends wide, trying to get it to fall. Cannot do it, so it's a side out. Back to Yates, looking to build on this 5-1 lead that he has here in game two. Side out. Yeah, Hunter's really dangerous when you get him out wide right there because he can change direction so easily. Yates hasn't come out on top of, of many of those kitchen exchanges. Yates is there on that swinging volley. He's been very clean on pretty much all of his volleys. Missing that one there, but he was at full extension. But a nice little answer here from Hunter. Keeping his brother moving on that point. And again, the cross court just going too far for Hunter Johnson. I feel like we've seen that a few times. Yates doing a good job of keeping Hunter just off balance enough in those points. 5 2. <laughs> close. <laughs> it was close. It looked a little long from where. Tough angle Seven for us two. from up here. Yeah. 7 2. We do have. Line judges here today, most of the time, coming up to this championship Sunday. The players call their own lines, but we do have USA Pickleball officials calling the lines here in Cincinnati today for championship Sunday. And Yates Johnson sitting just three points away from forcing a game to 15 because he's the one who came through the back draw. So he would have to have that last game in order to get the gold medal. So when we went inside yesterday, I was talking to both Hunter and Yates um, a little bit more about their paddle you know, change. They switched paddles at the US Open. They've now signed with Engage Pickleball. And going from the paddles they were using before to these, it's still a little bit of an adjustment. Um, they don't have as much grit on the paddles they're more, using now. More, more power, um, less grit. Right, they have more power, less grit on these paddles. So it's a little bit of a different game. And what you see it here too is you see a lot of their balls are flatter and harder. They're driving. Um, with their other paddles they were using, they had more grit on. So they weren't as hard, but they had more shape on. 
So it's a little bit of a different adjustment for them. But right now, it seems like Yates is making the adjustment a little bit better. And, and it may not be in the long run or whatnot, but today, right now, Yates is making that adjustment really well. And you see it. You know, when we're si on the sideline here, we can see how hard that ball is. We can also see how flat it is. It doesn't have as much shape as they used to with all the other paddles they were using before. So the adjustment that they have to make when they have a new paddle like that, is it more of a change in the wrist, in the wrist power, in the angle? Like, what do they the, have to change? Yeah, there's, there's a whole, whole lot of things that go into that one. Your part of it is, is the contact point. Yo, if if they're used to really generating a, a ton of, of, of spin, especially Eight top two. spin with a grit, grittier paddle, and they're way underneath it, now you come with something that, that kind of doesn't and slides. Oh. Oh, oh goes back across oh. the body. <laughs> wow. Hunter gets jelly legged here in the middle. He thought he was going down the line. Watch this. Oh that's great defense on the ATP. Nine two. Side out. No one catching the net, but yeah. Uh, change in contact point, change in, in how far you're getting underneath the ball. You may have to come up and, and be a little bit flatter, like Don was saying, where you can't brush it as much. So a lot of things to work through for them as they get used to these new paddles. But like you said, Don, right now, Yates certainly looking like today he's got a better handle on the <laughs> new paddle. And Yates with a well-placed ball, sees his brother going across, sends that ball behind him. So it's a side out with Hunter just getting one more point on the board. Nine three. Just missing the ATP right there is Yates Johnson. He was there, but again, he's full sprint. That's a hard shot. Makes it look easy as he gets there. Three nine. Covering the court like it was nothing, like it was nothing That's sideline okay. to sideline. No, <laughs> I'm 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 like on the ground in the corner over there, <laughs> sucking air. Maybe have to get the puffer out a little, you know. My goodness, they just make it look so effortless covering this whole court. You just saw Yates put his fingers to his <laughs> to his pulse <laughs> in his <laughs> neck. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the things too that. We always love watching between Hunter and Yates as they Receiver, absolutely nine, keep in. that competitive fire, but they don't lose the fun in it either, especially when you hear them start talking to themselves or making those gestures like we've seen Hunter just go, I don't know how he hit that, throwing yeah. his hands in the air. Well, when in Sacramento, right, it was, <laughs> it was really interesting to see them. They're in a timeout. And they're next to each other, like Dom and I are sitting there, with, like the three of us are sitting next to each other. And they're talking to each other about each other's game during the timeout. I'm like, against oh, each against other. Against each other. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, now they're, over, now they're over talking to each other right now as well in a timeout. I mean, and it wasn't even like there was some trash talking, right? They were talking yeah. about like stroke technique and stuff in a timeout when you're going against them. It was like. Yeah, that's not not normal. <laughs> <laughs> Receiver, one timeout remaining. Server, one timeout remaining. So we're going to pick things up here in game two. Hunter Johnson with the serve, trying to force a game three to 11. Time in. Five, nine. Point. Just a little flat on that return from Yates. Oh, nine. 
nice gets <laughs> from Haunted Johnson right there. <laughs> and Yates kind of punches the ball back at him a little bit. Hunter looks back. Serious, bro? Seven, nine. That ball going wide, so it's going to be a side out. You see Hunter begin to talk to himself, just like we were talking about. And it's going to be Yates with the ball. Nine, Been sitting at nine for quite some time, trying to get. Side and out. here he is again. So it was nine two just a few minutes ago. So Hunter is on a five nothing run right now, getting the ball back again with the chance to Seven, continue nine. to cut this lead that his brother's built. Side out. Just exchanging unforced errors right here. And, you know, again, it's, is it in his head? You know, is, is it in the back of his head right now? Yeah, it's again, nine, a nine, two lead. Now it's nine, seven. Uh, too good from Hunter. Yeah, I mean, it's always tough to get that, those final couple of points. But then as you give up a couple, give up Seven a couple nine. more, then you get tighter and tighter and tighter. He's not playing as loose as what he was when he was up 9-2. A little bit better there. But you can see that he's that he's that the, there's some hesitation and he's a little bit tighter in his strokes. What's the old adage, right? You're not playing nine to seven. win, you're playing not to lose. And that's the last thing you want to do. You want to play to win, play your game. And those balls right there, he makes the first one, doesn't make the second one. In game one, he was making all of those. Yeah. You know, the other thing to talk about, we talk about what's going on in Yates' head, right, in the recap of Daytona that might be there. But Yates is the one who beat Hunter most recently. So you have to think Seven Hunter is nine. sitting there going, no, I know he can beat me. <laughs> I got to figure out how to. Oh. Oh. Getting the lucky <laughs> roll there is Hunter Johnson. That thing just barely dipping over the net. I think that hit the bottom of the net cord. Eight, nine. It still rolled up and over. Yeah, much Side better out. angle there from Yates, pulling Hunter out wide off the court. Still, though, it's a 6-0 run for Hunter Johnson. So Yates trying to get a point, Nine ideally eight. two of them, on the board <laughs> here <laughs> with his serve. Two, two left lefties. Just two left See, he, he had to do more with that, that fifth ball. It was an excellent, excellent third shot. Right, this one right Eight, here. Nine. Well, incorrect position. Side out. Oh, that is very. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't. No, no, he didn't. He gave a full-on <laughs> laugh and looked right up at us. <laughs> yes, Yates. he did it. Yates is enjoying that moment, looking right <laughs> up at us, saying, that is, you know what, that is I will almost, take it. That is almost unheard of in singles for the fact that you're not trying to figure out which who's serving or, or which side of the court you're on with your partner. So we take a look back at what just happened here. He hit. Hunter on the wrong side. He hit Yates right there. Uh -huh. <laughs> he just gave a laugh and a smile. And Yates just totally, he knew it too. <laughs> and now it's Hunter looking up at us, throwing his hat Threw down. <laughs> And the worst part is, you know, Yates totally baited him into it. He oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He didn't <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're shaking heads right now, too. Yeah, so. I'm going to go to the opposite side, so he thinks that he's <laughs> returned. <laughs> so Hunter went to the opposite side trying to bait him into it. And this is the sibling rivalry that we love so much here on the this APP is, Tour. This is awesome. Oh, doesn't doesn't capitalize on it. <laughs> no, they're still they're still laughing. So he's gonna do it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. 
Mind games. It's all mind games. Oh, you the got it. ATP oh, from Yates Johnson. Hunter staring at that line. See, he's <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, perfectly on the line. Oh, got and then it. Yates getting ready to serve. Hunter trying to bait him before even looking around. Yates points and says, go to the other side. I know what you're trying to do. Oh, that's such a good swinging volley right there from Yates Johnson. Gets it clean. Watch him just cut through this. Boom. Ten, eight. Sets up game point for Yates Johnson. needs to get underneath that one just a little bit more. He's come out flat on some of those forehands. But I think that also, too, that's part of that paddle change, right? With the, with the grittier paddle, he was getting that paddle head way under before. Oh, the tweener. He's getting that one, too. Oh, he was there. And it's good. Good. Three points. This tweener. Perfectly placed, and it's there. Just can't get that backhand drop, and then the field goal's good. 9-10. Side out. Yeah, Hunter a little late on that backhand. Gives Yates another chance at game point here. 10-9. To force a game to 15. That wow. was a great two-handed backhand right there. He got on top of that. Almost a roll, but a drive. Absolutely beautiful there for Yates Johnson. Take another look at it here because this was game it. point for Yates Johnson. Yeah, this one he actually, I mean, it's the acceleration and that left hand coming underneath. And then, like you said, Dom, it's underneath, shape it, come over the top. Incredibly done there. So Yates takes two games here against Hunter, which means we now go to a game to 15. We'll have that when we come back. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the APP Tour. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the APP Tour.
they're brothers, they love each other, but this is gonna be an absolute battle between Hunter and Yates Johnson. Yo, Hunter is gonna have some work to do because this is a double elimination bracket. He's gonna have to beat Yates two out of three and then again in that game to 15. Oh, wow. That is disgustingly good. Oh, wow, off the tape. Nothing Yates can do, and Hunter Johnson completes the comeback and takes game number one. Oh, what a ball. Game number two will go to Yates Johnson by a score of 11-4. We are going into a third game. Hands from Yates. Yates Johnson wow. posing and grunting right there. What a run from Hunter Johnson. Game to 15 coming up for all the marbles. Oh, he goes spin move, does Hunter Johnson on the block, and then Yates gets up and gets this. Here's the spin move, right back. Great shot, good point by both of these boys. Oh, oh no my way. God. Both, both of them are down on the court. Both of them are down on the ground right now. Men wow. down, men down. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, no, and and your gold medalist, Hunter Johnson, comes out of the What a comeback from Hunter Johnson. The third time these two have played each other in men's singles this year on the APP Tour for a shot at gold, and it did not, has not disappointed so far. So we are in a championship tiebreak, and that is because Yates Johnson came through the back draw, won the bronze medal match to punch his ticket here to Championship Sunday, which means that they now have to play a game to 15 in order to decide the winner. So this game, winner takes all. Yeah, I mean, it's, again, it's what we want. We love seeing more pickleball, obviously. But again, it's this game to 15. It's one game to 15 for all the marbles. Again, a great job by Yates coming back, winning that two out of three pretty handily. Hunter had a nice run at the end, but now we get that game to 15. And we'll get that game 15 to you, game 215 to you when we come back. We save time when we buy and book online at DiscountTire.com. Which means more time Wait, take for... Take a check. Kyle, it's pickleball. Every time. Zero, zero, two. Get 30% shorter average wait time when you buy and book online at DiscountTire.com. The APP is presented by... Franklin. Level up. Pickleball magazine. And Sunday. 
welcome back to the APP Vlasic Classic. This championship Sunday off to a fantastic start between Hunter and Yates Johnson. We are on to the game to 15 because Yates came all the way through the back draw to get the chance to play his brother here with a shot at the gold medal. And now it all comes down to this. Yates taking games one and games two. Can he do it again here in game three? What do you have to do if you're Hunter Johnson to get the better of Yates here? Well, I think you, Hunter wants to get to that that kitchen cat and mouse game where Yates just wants to wants to open up the court from the baseline. So probably look for for whoa, there's just a passing shot straight down the line. Stay hot. Yeah. I mean Yates is gonna keep doing that. Hunter has to has to try to slow this game down a little bit. And, and not make mistakes. And it's a total opposite of what we saw in Sacramento. Yeah. Where Yates wanted to slow it down and Hunter wanted to speed it up. Now, Yates is playing at a fast pace. Driving balls well. Oh. Leaving that dink short. Yates coming all the way over to get the ball, which Hunter places directly in his chest. <laughs> Again, it, it's all serious, but they do still have some fun with each other. That's what siblings are good for. A lot more fun for Yates right now is he's in control. Three straight right there. Hunter Johnson with the side out, though, so he gets a shot at his first points. Not going to yeah. do it that way, though. No, good hold there from Yates. He has gone cross-court a couple of times on that wider ball. So Hunter holding in the middle. He's actually saw him move to that backhand side. That's twice that Yates has driven a ball right in that pretty much same spot. and Hunter's, like, almost gone down. Yeah. Yates has built up a pretty, pretty good lead both of the first two games. So this start, staying true to what we've seen so far today, he built up an 8-0 lead before Hunter got on the board in game one and then a 5-0 lead in game two. Yeah, good control there from Yates. He's not trying to do too much. He is putting good pace on it, but he's switching the locations up. So it's when Hunter's stuck in the middle of the court there, that's where it's very difficult. You become reactionary rather than anticipating where they're going to go. Zero four. That return from Yates sailing just a few inches long. So Hunter gets on the board. Good angle taken there by Straight Yates up. on the cross court. That was a big backhand angle right there. Thought he was going to run around it. Hit a forehead. Uh, forehead. Oh my gosh. A forehand overhead. You were just trying to save save space. Save I'm words. just. I'm just Slapping ball on forehead. Yeah. The, the forehead would have been illegal. This is not soccer. <laughs> so <laughs> heading the ball over the net, no good here in pickleball. Let's just take two words and get rid of the whole middle part. And ball One, four. Nice recovery there by Hunter. ATP from oh, Yates. Get out. <laughs> Let alone him, <laughs> him gonna tr that being Yates trying to drop this. He drops it cross court while he's running the opposite way. Great D of the ATP here. That just unbelievable. Yeah, I, I will say this, Yates's footwork is so much better today. Well, and even even last week in Sacramento, mm -hmm. it was it was really really good. 
but on Thursday his footwork was a little bit off. He was slow getting to some balls. Today he's setting himself up perfectly with his footwork. Sliding into the barrier. <laughs> it just he, said he I had not, you. Just say that, it just he? said I had you. Yeah. Hunter Johnson with the serve. 1-5. Make it 2-5 in this game to 15. Hunter going for a little too much. Five two. Point. That's just such a good ball by Yates Johnson as he goes right at the body of Hunter and makes Hunter pop that ball up, plays a little defense, and able to finish with the Six forehand. Two. Yates cannot get that cross court to drop on the correct side of the net, so it's going to be another side out here. Hunter trailing by four. Two six. Yeah, went Point. for a little too much there again. His volleys, that being the eights, have been very good Reset. so far today. But the line judge calling it in. Let's look at the replay. Hard to get it. Can't tell from that angle. Accurate reading there, <laughs> but. Well, let's look at this. Six three. May have just painted the back of the line, but it's called in. Oh, good exchange. <laughs> Made a little backhand scorpion in the middle of that point where Hunter it, tried to light Yates up yeah, there. Yeah, that was, that was head hunting in that one. That right one right there. <laughs> Look at our production crew on top of it, right at the at the ball that we were talking about. Seven three. Big finish on the forehand though from Gates. And here we are, eight three. The score: Yates Johnson up again in this decisive game to fifteen. Let's take a look back at our SunMed recovery moment of the match. We've had some great exchanges, but this one, whew, the ATP. So I was interested in that point because the ball bounced. Hunter was worried about going into the kitchen there, and then he kind of like threw off his balance a little bit, but. Yeah, the, the ATP defense and then the, well, you were talking with Andre Mick yesterday where he was just carving and slicing the volleys. Gates is doing the same today. Like a butcher. <laughs> I don't want to be in your shot. Oh, gosh. We have too much fun up here, but. Very, very yeah. punny today. But Yates, Just wait for it. Yates is, having oh, the, oh. Yates is having the most fun out here, though, as he is locked in and you see a lot of times too you're going from the two out of three and then the game to 15 two totally different matches we've seen it a ton chad in the years that we've been watching pickleball the person who wins the two out of three and then all of a sudden they game to 15 and then it's and then just it's like just a, a, momentum completely yeah. changes but not so far here as yates is in control up eight three well we saw it we saw it in mesa with with men's doubles right desk oh yeah ask you and teoni get get destroyed 11-0, go Throttled. to the game to 15, and then win that one, whatever it was, 15-2, 3 or 2. 
15 to not very much. Yeah. What I remember of that one. We will see Diascu later today twice. We'll see him in men's doubles and then mixed doubles. Stick around to see that. Right now we have a side out here in the men's singles. Hunter Johnson trying to carve a little bit more into Yates' lead. I think I think he lost it. He did. As soon after he hit it, he looked up. He's like, at something, but he did not get much on that overhead. Four, eight. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. oh, cannot get back from the Ernie, but doing the full splits is Yates Johnson. Sending it just a little bit higher than Hunter can reach. Yeah, Yates saying, how'd you pick that up? So Hunter putting together a little run here in this game to 15. What a volley right there, fully outstretched. Again, both these boys make that look easy. They volley full extension and still have control on the ball. That's that spot that Yates has found a few times. Hunter goes, match. how is he making these? It's a good spot because it's so hard yeah. to defend. Sets up really, really early. I mean, one one thing with the early preparation and the early setup, right? You're there and you can read what your opponent's doing. So Hunt Yates is holding it till he can till he sees Hunter's position. If he sees him go cross court a little bit, then he's going to go down the line. If he sees him hold in the middle, then he'll shape it back. That ball called in. Yates expressing his disagreement. <laughs> Yates looks at Hunter goes, you know it was out. Hunter goes, it was in. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to get that from him today, sir. No. Oh, we're going to get it. Oh. Hold on. So we're having some conferring here by the USA Pickleball officials. Nine six, Yates still in the lead. Here's a look at it. Six nine. Uh, I'm ball. pretty sure that ball's out. <laughs> Uh, and then again, so now, here's the thing, is that now you cannot let that bother you that much, mm -hmm. right? It's history. It's in the past. You've got to let it go. You've got to move on. And right there, he took that swinging volley, and he just went too hard on that, trying to really make a statement. Talk about that all the time, the emotions, right? You have to let them fuel you, but you can't let them own you in these moments. You have to make sure that you channel them Nine, seven. goes for pretty much every athlete across say, all sports how, how do we do that AJ? well you know oh. the best <laughs> figure it out <laughs> sure there's some calming breaths seven, nine. some mantras repeated oh nice oh, get from hunter timeout receiver eight nine one minute Time out here from Yates. But yeah, that's a great get from Hunter. Like you said, Chad, it really put Yates in a tough position retreating back to the baseline. Well, it's, all, it's also, I mean, somewhat demoralizing there, too. You, you hit what you feel like is a perfect volley, and you're going to pull Hunter off the court, and then Hunter's there nice and easy and gives you an even tougher ball back. And we got that split screen going with both the boys right there. Uh, we had the split screen. I almost thought they were sitting next I to each other again. I, I had to look. That had to look no, twice. No barrier there. <laughs> but yeah, 
They're, they're on opposite sides of the court right now. They joke with each other throughout this game, but this one, a little too tight to be having those kind of moments. And we talked about how Yates in those first two games in particular just looked like he was playing to win. He was playing loose. How do you feel like this game is going for Yates in terms of that? Well, it's, it's him almost looking like playing not to lose right now. He was playing to win in games one and two in the two out of three. And now it seems like he's just a little tighter right now. And then again, that, that call, that could be a pivotal moment in this game because he hasn't found it yet since that call. He said, yes, I have, Dom. I got it back. Don't you worry. <laughs> and he did right there. That's a good construction of a point after a very good timeout to kind of calm himself down. He now has to do it while he's serving. And he did. All right. Good ball. He should, both of you. Time out. Oh, I'm yeah. I wasn't questioning it at all. I'm just <laughs> saying. For some reason, you always play your best when you're not having the opportunity to score. He's a cool wheel. Oh, and the cartwheel. Give him a perfect 10 on the cartwheel, but unfortunately the point for Hunter goes to Yates. I think that ball may have been going out right there. That last <laughs> that last ball that Hunter hit. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to give him a 10 on that cartwheel. He goes, he's the actor. <laughs> Yates calls Hunter the actor. 11-8. 11-8, Yates with the serve here. Sends out one just a little bit wide. I like the change of pace idea, though, there going inside out drop after he just went big drive. If he can get that it's in, coming. that's trouble for Hunter. Oh. Call made by the baseline judge there that it was out. That was out and wide. I'm surprised the sideline call that one as well. Oh, uh, and that's exactly what Hunter can't have right here is easy unforced errors for Yates to get on the board on a return to serve giving away points late in this game to 15 timeout receiver and it's going to okay, be Hunter taking taking a quick timeout here trying to break up this little run that his brother has put together. Yates on a 3-0 run here in this game to 15. So he goes over and towels off. Takes his time and towel off. Comes all the way back. Grabs his paddle. Puts it down. Goes timeout now. So he's really milking the timeout is Hunter Johnson. <laughs> well, he, he also walked over and he was coughing a little bit. Yeah. And then he could walk back and he had to cough again. Right. So then he I think I don't know if he actually said timeout or the referee is like, well, you've wasted so much time. Might as well gonna, take it, right? Now but you're going to call a timeout. Yeah, again, down though by five here, and he needs to get on a run here because Yates seems to have found it. And it was I was worried at that call that was made that he really disagreed with it. It looked like it was possibly out um, because the next two balls after that he really tried to force and kind of came up short on so here we are in this decisive game to 15 in our men's singles gold medal match between Hunter and Yates Johnson. Yates winning the first two games but coming through the back draw, so he has to beat Hunter here in this game to 15 if he wants to win his second straight gold on the APP Tour. Hunter Johnson, though, definitely not going to make it easy on his brother, forcing the side out there. Nice cross court backing. Oh, take it with the net roller. <laughs> and Hunter sending that ball back with a little bit of zest. I mean, there's, I don't know if there's been any nice <laughs> exchanges as far as giving balls. <laughs> what? That's like the sixth time that he's done it, and Hunter's had the same response every single time is how. He just does not believe that his brother can hit that shot right now, and he has done it consistently in the two out of three and here in the game to 15. 13 eight. As you guys say, placement over power. And Yates has found that place. 
on and both then he sides goes of the, the court. Other way. <laughs> Hunter, Hunter leads, leans to the backhand side because he just got passed. And now, receiver, 14, eight, one minute. now he beats him down the line. And a timeout called here again. Hunter Johnson choosing to use his last one, I believe, here to make I sure mean, that he... I mean, you're at championship <laughs> point, so why not? Exactly. The H goes, come on. <laughs> I guess he burned his final timeout. He's ready to go. But Hunter Johnson doing everything he can to stay in this one. Trailing by six here in this game to 15. Yates does have championship point on his paddle. He won his first men's singles gold a few weekends ago in Sacramento. Would like nothing more than to make it back to back. And has a chance here against Hunter. He certainly has had the momentum, the placement, the ball movement. Time in. 14 8. So far in this match. Can he finish it here? Oh. Not on that one. Well, those are some really good balls, though, from Yates. But unfortunately for him, Hunter's on the other side and had some really good volleys. To counter that, Yates tries to go left handed Eight, for the winner. Yates with a good cross-court forehand, putting it out of the reach of the paddle of Hunter. Well, the difference right there is he takes it out of the air. If he lets that ball bounce, Hunter's able to recover and get back in. Championship point, number two. Yeah. And that will do it. Yates Johnson wins the gold in the men's single. <laughs> a pretty harsh <laughs> chest bump there from Hunter before a true congratulations. Yates Johnson is your Vlasic Classic men's singles champion. We're going to hear from him when we come back. Yates Johnson, your 2023 APP Vlasic Classic Champion. Chad, he had it going on today. No, I mean, every ball that he was hitting was clean. He was freezing Hunter in the middle of the courts and the passing shots. He was just setting it up. We see championship point right there. His signature little, little hop. hop. He's got this signature hop now when he wins. So congratulations to Yates Johnson. And we are going to throw it down now courtside. AJ is courtside with both Hunter and Yates Johnson. Court because we have the Johnson brothers right here. A fantastic start to this championship Sunday here at the APP Vlasic Classic. Congratulations to Yates Johnson on your back-to-back -back goals. We're going to talk to you in just a minute. Hunter, 
Take a deep breath. I know that was not how you wanted this one to go, but it seemed like you guys had so much fun still out there. What was Yates doing that made it so hard to get to his shots? I mean, plain and simple, he was hitting maybe 20 winners to one of my winners. So, I mean, I couldn't really do much. He was playing on fire, and uh, I think I'm going to go back, watch some film so I can beat him the next time. Yeah, I know you don't like this feeling. What was it that you were trying to get into in that third game, 215, because you did have some momentum there. I mean, he ramped up his serve. I was just trying to make some deep returns. Obviously, that didn't work. Um, not much work today for me. But uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, it's tough to play your brother, but it's it's cool to see him succeed. Um, and you got back-to-back -back golds beating me. I think that's a great accomplishment. So uh, yeah, <laughs> congrats to him. Are you going to give him a ride to the airport later? Uh, he is the driver of the rental car this week. so. He better give me a ride. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's give it up for Hunter Johnson, your silver medalist. Ken, thank you so much. Give also, happy Mother's Day. Love you, Mom. There you go. Well, we were going to give you guys a moment at the end to both say it, but that's fine. You can have it. <laughs> All right, now you, back-to-back -back gold medals, and you came out with a plan and seemed like just executed to perfection. What was your goal coming out? Uh, yeah, I think I know Hunter's game pretty well. Uh, I didn't, you know, I mean, I just came out really aggressive. I was making all the shots. All of them were landing. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't really do anything wrong, and, and I was covering his passing shots pretty well, which usually passes me quite a bit. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think I was just on fire today. And, but, you know, it was a great match, and, you know, it's always fun playing your twin brother. It meant so much for you to get that first gold in Sacramento. Here you are, back-to-back -back gold medals. What have you changed about your game to make this possible? Uh, yeah, back-to-back -back gold medals feels pretty good. Um, I think it's just confidence. You know, um, the more you start winning, the, you know, you kind of ride the train and, and just ride that confidence. And, um, yeah, I wasn't, like, afraid out there. I just, you know, kind of just left it all out there, hit all my shots as hard as I could, and they just landed. So, um, yeah, it was a great match. All right, before we get you your medal, let's come over here. You guys want to say something to mom for Mother's Day? Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. We love you. Thanks for everything you do. Love you too, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's give Yates his gold medal. Thank you so much, Ken. Give it up for Yates Johnson, your gold medalist at the APP Vlasic Classic in men's singles. Well, there it is, your back-to-back -back champion, Yates Johnson, here at the Vlasic Classic. He doubles up after Sacramento, Chad. Great job by Yates. Yeah, and he, he talked about, you know, I think I know my brother's game pretty well. I think he plays his best. His best singles pickleball against, against Hunter. So, awesome job by Yates. Congratulations to both these boys here. And next up here on Championship Court, it is all about the ladies. Salome Davide coming out of the winner's bracket. Can she get back on top of the podium here at the APP Velocic Classic? Having a tough time getting better? Our three-day Level Up Pickleball camps feature a low student pro ratio and offer personalised training from the best pros in the game. Level Up will take you full circle through the point building process by teaching proper stroke mechanics, positioning and winning game strategies. Each camper also receives a personalised before and after video, an instructional manual, product discounts and more. Discover how good you can be with Level Up Pickleball camps. Visit us today at leveluppickleballcamps.com. The Pro Excel Pickleball Paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control with the same paddle 
and one grip, and this is it. Pro XR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. Pro XR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. The APP is presented by Pro XR, C and D Nets, and Discount Tire. This is the last bottle of Fat Tire. The last of over 750 million bottles ever made. The last of a beer icon. And this is Doug, who hasn't a clue. So he's just doing Doug things. Dang it, Doug! Anyway, we've changed our recipe. Crisper, brighter, still carbon neutral. This is the first of an all new Fat Tire. Welcome back to the APP Vlasic Classic Championship Sunday. Women's singles up next, Salome Davidze. We missed her in Sacramento, but she has come here to Cincinnati and proven that she still has plenty of room for a spot here on Championship Sunday. Let's learn a little bit more about the 37-year-old. I'm Salome Davidze. I live in Jupiter, Florida. I was born in Georgia, which is in Europe. My brother told me he's been playing for a couple of years and he was like, you gotta try it. And I was like, no, are you kidding me? I'm a professional tennis player. And he was like, you gotta try it, you gotta try it. And I sort of ignored him. And uh, then without me knowing, he entered us into the US Open, like in the lottery. So I started playing pickleball. Uh, I think that it's my pickleball game is a translation of tennis on a smaller court with plastic ball. I think I can drive through, I have pretty decent passing shots when I'm playing well. I feel it's like a big family. I feel like uh, I, I got to know mostly everybody and everybody seems to be know each other and so friendly and so positive. I really like the positive energy. I can't wait to see them where you know you see the draws are 128 like in tennis and all great level. Um, I think that's where it's growing. I'm really hoping that it's going to be an Olympic sport one day and I can totally see it going. There. Salome Davidze cruising her way through the winner's bracket here in Cincinnati. And as you can see, this gold medal match, a rematch of the women's winner's bracket final between Davidze and Jenna Hessert, who is a new face to us here on the APP Tours Championship Sunday. What have you liked about Jenna's game as you've seen her move through this tournament? Jenna is a grinder. She's going to fight until that ball bounces a second time and even if it bounces a second time she may be diving for it so she is a grinder um, she had two matches before this that went three where she ended up losing the first game and then having to come back and win games two and three so she's gonna grind away she's never gonna give up it's just gonna be a matter of she can slow Davide down biggest thing for me for Jenna is that she needs to get Davide on the move if Davide sets her feet and is able to create from a set position 
or her feet are stationary and she can step into a ball, that's going to be bad for Jenna Hesser. Yeah, and 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 you hit it right on the head that Dom Salome Davidze is one of the players that really struggles with front to back movement, moving. So you actually want to hit a ball shorter you want to bring her forward because she has a tendency to run over the top of that or, or, or jam herself up a little too much if you try to go side to side movement with with Salome she's going to rip those balls and she will destroy it. we've given <laughs> you the game plan so let's see who can execute it the best coming up next we have the women's singles gold medal match of the APP Vlasic Classic just a little bit more and get you unlimited minutes, data, and text. Six hotspots, concert coupons, cable subscription, dental cleanings. We need all that? Do we need all that? I wouldn't think so. You should use Consumer Cellular. They have everything you need, nothing you don't. I'll throw in this tiny little fan. Car wash voucher? Ha! <laughs> Light up soap dispenser. I think you lost. Get the exact same coverage as the nation's leading carriers. All the talk, text, and data you need starting at $20. Consumer Cellular. If you like to dink, then Pickleball Magazine has what you're looking for. Our bi-monthly print publication will help you become a better player with instructional tips, drills, and articles from the top teaching pros in the sport. And you'll become a healthier, stronger player with psychological, nutritional, and wellness advice from experts in their fields. Finally, if it's product reviews or the latest news, we have that too. To learn more or to subscribe today, go to pickleballmagazine.com. After 30 years, we say goodbye to beloved Fat Tire. Goodbye to a taste that's attracted millions of loyal fans. Because after 30 years, we've changed our recipe. Say hello to a crisper, brighter, still carbon neutral, and dare we say better, Fat Tire. We save time when we buy and book online at DiscountTire.com. Which means more time Wait, take for... a check. Kyle, it's Pickleball. Every time. Zero, zero, two. Get 30% shorter average wait time when you buy and book online at DiscountTire.com. The ATP is presented by Sunday. Power. And Gamble. We are on to women's singles coming your way. We have Megan Fudge taking on Saloma de Vizze. It's going to be about patterns between these two and who can get the other out of their pattern. Yeah, too good there from de Vizze. Megan Fudge with the first game win of this women's singles gold medal match. That's great approach by de Vizze at the right time. Oh my gosh, two balls just dotted right in the corner. Gives Davidze game number two. Good pressure from Davidze, so she takes it 11-7 and forces the fourth game tiebreaker to 15. And you hear the crowd booing here because Megan Fudge walking off the course without the customary paddle tap. No. Just frustration. And the paddle goes flying to the sideline. The crowd giving Salome Davidze a roar for that hard-fought women's singles gold medal. Gold always feels good. I can't be having a better day. The last time we saw Salome Davidze here on the APP Tour, she won gold in Mesa. Can she do it again here in Cincinnati? She's getting ready for the serve, the first one of this women's singles gold medal match against Jenna Hesser. And that yeah. serve. Overcooked that one just a long. little. I mean, one thing's for sure, she's going to go big. And, and that's going to be a key. Like, Hesser wants Davide to come up. Because Hesser can play that drop, right? Like, so Davide comes up here. Watch her hit this cross court. It's just a cross court drop. Yeah, I was a little surprised Davide came forward on that one. It wasn't the best ball to come forward on. She hadn't pulled Hesser off the court or, or got her out of position. Gets the over the ball there, though. Salome Davidze does on the overhead. Jenna cannot get to it. Jenna's got larger shoulders than I do. Like, she's 
ripped. She loves CrossFit. She does CrossFit as part of her training for pickleball. Point. Played tennis growing up, but got into CrossFit after college. Ran track at Yale. I believe she owned CrossFit, a gym. One Very one. well. She is a huge part of her life. That's that's what Davide is going to do right yeah. there. She, that ground stroke right there sets her feet like we talked about early in the open. If she's setting her feet like that, Hazard's going to be in trouble. I mean, it, Davide is one of the people that you would say you don't want to give a deeper ball to because you're keeping her in that side-to-side -side movement. You're one that you want to hit. You want to hit a, a, a kind of mid-court angle where you're pulling her forward, but you're also pulling her out wide. Great one. Salome Davidze working herself into a 3-1 lead here in game one. As you can see, just that side-to-side -side movement that you guys are talking about, Davidze is so good at that game. Yeah, it, it feeds into her strength. When she – the the side-to-side -side movement, she's Four able one. to prepare early with the paddle, and then it's just get to that ball and, and rip it once you go. When you incorporate that front-to-back movement, then it becomes separation away and how far you get on top of that ball. That was a good job by Hessler right there. So she was cross-court with Davide, but then she flattens the ball out, gets Davide moving cross-court, and almost not on the run, but moving, and she puts pressure coming to the kitchen line. Side out. So I spoke with Hessler before the day started, and you see her shaking her hand, and I was speaking to her in the player lounge before they played today, and she was talking about the hand uh, injury that has been bothering her. And it was bothering her more in doubles than it was singles, but you see her shaking it out constantly still. Oh, that's so good right there. But you saw that too. She came to the kitchen line, then Davide was coming up. She retreats right here and is able to create a great angle on the two-handed backhand. One four. Gets the ball back on her side. Drop serve, and she missed that one as well. It's, side yeah, it's the it's the the wrist. Yeah, her hand is really bothering her. She's going away from anything kind of powerful, which is hard because watching her play earlier this week, that's such a huge part of her game. So instead, it's another fault and a side out. Too good, but uh, one thing you see though too is what's going to be her strength right now is the backhand, the two-handed yeah. backhand, because basically the two-handed backhand is a left-handed forehand. You know, le the right hand just kind of guiding that paddle right there. Five so that's going to be her strength. It's the forehand that's going to be the struggle. Salome Divize just forcing Jenna to use all of that track skill that she has going across the score across the court in every direction. Yeah, unfortunately you're you're seeing like you were talking about Dom, she's gonna favor that back end because she can use more of that left hand. So she's she's sliding over a little bit further to open up that backhand. Unfortunately, it allows Davidze to create more angles. She goes one down the line to the backhand, pulls out on the forehand, gets that floating ball a little bit on the forehand, and then goes back out wide. So Hesset is definitely going to get her steps in right now, going, going side to side. But she has to find a way of she's not going to be able to hit through Davidze. When she's on the run, she has to use that good roll. And we saw we, we saw the backhand roll go behind Davidze a couple of times. She's going to have to incorporate that. Without that, that right wrist and that big forehand, she's, she's not going to be able to hit through Davidze at all. 
Davidze building up a 6-1 lead here in this first Turn game. 6-1. And with the serve, a chance to extend it. That's a good job by Davidze playing the cat and mouse game up at the kitchen line and showing her ability to move side to side. 7-1. Good court coverage. Cuts off the angle, does Davidze right there. And again, she gets Hesser on full sprint to the sideline here to have to play this backhand. 8 1. Ooh, just why? Like the idea, though. And she's hit that a couple times already, just going just wide right there. Nine, one. That replay, you can see right down that line, that ball just outside. Side oh, Hester out. getting a little love off the tape right there. Davide almost able to get that. Just use the net every time. That's the new strategy. <laughs> there it is. You can do it. You would. <laughs> oh, absolutely. If only, huh? If only. <laughs> it's part of the if One only. Nine. Wow, we, oh. got, we got back to neutral. How did we get back to neutral on that point right there? <laughs> Davide's <laughs> laughing. Davide misses the ball that just sits up right in the middle of the court. No pressure, too much time to think on that one. But the get that she had earlier on. 2 9. So. Side out. Just so struggling. Yeah, that hand is really bothering her. What I'd like to see her do is what Davide used to do. The drop two-handed, two. right? She can drop that and hit a two-hander off a drop serve. But right now, she cannot control that forehand. And Salome Davidze taking advantage of it at every opportunity. Gets the ball back and now has herself sitting at game point. Yeah, she's hitting a couple of balls to the backhand to really open up that forehand side. And once Thank the you. ball gets to, to Hesset's forehand, there's nothing that she can do from that point on. I'll recall. 10 2. Game point opportunity for Salome Davidze. And that will do it. Game one goes to Salome Davidze. 11 2. She takes game one handily against Jenna Hessert in this women's singles gold medal match here at the APP Classic Classic. We've got game two when we come back. I'd like to speak to customer service. I just want to speak to a customer service representative. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Oh, representative. Please try again. I'm oh, sorry. buddy, come here. You need a hug. Oh, there you go. You also need consumer self. You'll talk to a real person every time. As nice as you? Much nicer. Well, almost. <laughs> Get the exact same coverage as the nation's leading carriers and 100% U.S.-based customer support starting at $20. Consumer Cellular.
is presented by Vlasic and Plexus. That was your Vlasic Instant Classic, and that was exactly what we had in Sacramento. Let's take a look at the discount tire upcoming schedule. Next up, we head to New York City. It's the Boca Raton APP New York City Open in just a few weeks. And then you take a look through the rest of the summer. Some beautiful locations for some fantastic pickleball is what you can expect here on the APP Tour right now. It is Salome Davidze and Jenna Hesser in game two of the women's singles gold medal match here on this championship Sunday. Hesser getting the first point on her serve. She's been struggling with the placement of that one, but dialing it in a little bit better here to start game two. The ball never came up on her. Or for her right there as Hesser looks down. Line. The forehand side. Davidze stared that one down. Very one zero. nonchalant call from the oh, wait referee right there. Wait wait in. Side. And that one sailing wait. long from Davidze. So Jenna Hessert finding just a little bit of a rhythm here two in game zero. two. And there we go. Okay. And Hesser telling me before this side match. Sideline to sideline. That she said, I know that I can outlast anybody. She said her fitness is one of the things that she has no questions about. So she can Thank give 100% on every single point and know that she's not going to tire out. So we know she's not going to go away quietly here in game two. But Davidze, one of the best in the game at placing the ball and showcased right there. A nice swing and volley from Davize. Give her side out. See if she can get on the board here in game two. Point. Yeah, I think Davize is going to keep going at that forehand side for sure. Yes, it's had a couple One, balls down the line there, but you can still see the tentativeness when in in the serve. To line. I mean, Hesset's <laughs> Hesset's going as fine as you can go right now. But again, that's the key right there. Is what did she do? She went back to the baseline, and then what she do? She drops that ball in the kitchen. And we talked about that before this match started. Three, She's got to take her back to forward and keep her moving that way. Point. It's a nice little run here put together by Hesset. Very impressed. Sticking to her game plan here, but now executing better in game two. Oh, 
odd from Davidze that she actually took a little bit of pace off. She went easier on the ground strokes and just looked to stretch Hesed out. Gets that overhead. Big angle. Hesed defending that side of the court that has a little less space on it than the one that Davidze is on. And Davidze just creating such a good angle right there. As Hesser tries to go down the line, but you watch Davidze with this forehand volley just creates such a good angle right there. Yeah, good control again there from Davidze. A couple of times to the forehand side gets has it pinned and then opens up with that two hand backhand for the finish. Yeah, she doubled up on her in the corner yep. and kept her there. And now we have a tie game here in game two. Salome Davidze working her way back from being down 0-3. At one point in this game, too, chance to have her first lead of the game right here. Yeah, Hesed actually hit the hit the back fence on that one. I'm at receiver. Score is five four. One minute. She's gonna call a timeout here. Jenna Hesed is and Salome Davidze with her first lead here in game two. But what have you seen Jenna do so much better in game two to get herself on the board and in more of a rhythm? Well, she started off going deep to short, right? And that's how she got a couple points. It was like what Chad, you and I talked about beforehand, keeping her back and then pulling her in. And it's not that Davidze can't get to that, but she's gonna struggle a little more with that. Hester did a good job of that, but now Davidze's countered that with some really good swinging volleys here. But again, you called the Chad. She pinned her back in the corner twice and then is able to create that angle. Yeah, Davidze's actually played a little bit smarter than what we've seen her do in the past where she's tried to, usually when she gets behind, she tries to go bigger and she tries to hit her way out. She's taken a little bit of pace off of it and gone for those angles and those placements. And it's it's kind of, it's it's a, it's an uphill battle for Hesset right now, especially with what we're seeing with the, the wrist. <laughs> what an angle again, right on cue by Davidze, hitting that sharp angle cross court winner. Hard to believe the way that we're seeing her play, but Salome Davidze actually just celebrating her year anniversary in April of her first pickleball tournament. She said in January of last year, her brother called her up and said, hey, I signed you up for the US Open, so you better start practicing. And she did, and they won the, a 5 or she won a 5 tourney just a few weeks later. So we've seen her rise through pickleball in the last year. It's crazy, because I feel like we've seen her quite a bit here on Championship Sunday for being relatively new to the game. She's definitely not a veteran <laughs> uh, of uh, pickleball. She is still new, still learning every day. That ball's a little long. I'm getting distracted by the smell of some amazing food that's coming into the stadium right now. <laughs> I'm just gonna point that out there. It's a late on that one as well. So she's been late on the last two balls. Missed one wide, missed one in the net. Now she's shaking out her left wrist. Might have got jammed up a little bit there. Six, seven. Hessert working her way back into this game too. Chance to tie things up here. That's such a good ball there from Davide going cross court with her two-handed backhand. But the key right there is she takes a little pace off it, keeps it nice and low to the net, and Hessert has to hit that from her shins and can't counter. Wow. 
Oh, Hessen hits the back fence and still hits a perfect roll. I think that might have helped her as far as it shortened up her swing and she couldn't get as big. <laughs> That's just great concentration. When it was there for Hessert, she just tries to do a little too much with that forehand cross court. She had to Vize pulled to her left side, but can't find the forehand cross court winner. Seven six. Just long right there. Davidze coming through the winner's bracket to punch her ticket here Eight to six. Championship Sunday. And like you mentioned, she did so with relative ease, but Hessert, the one who challenged her the most, certainly. And we're seeing that again here in game two. Oh, I'm pretty sure she Okay, right on the line possibly right there. And the overhead from Davidze. Nine six. Nine six. Davidze just two points away from winning the gold. Ooh, just wide. But again, a good Point. deep ball by Davidze to the forehand side and has it. Opens up the backhand. Six. One minute. Just missing that one down the line. Jenna Hesser going to use a timeout here with the gold medal point on the paddle of Salome Davidze here in game two. She's up 10-6 after taking game one, 11-2. So Hesser certainly has found a little bit more of a rhythm. We always talk about how those last few points of a game seem like they're a lot harder to get. For Davidze, what does she have to do to close it out? Well, I mean, it's she needs to just continue to execute her shots. Again, she's going to that forehand of Jenna Hesser, and Hesser, honestly, I, I'm not seeing any issues with her forehand when she's in the point. It's really more on the serve where you're seeing her struggle a little bit. But again, she's continuing to move Hesser around and controlling that kitchen line where we thought it was going to be vice versa, but it's not. The Vizes brought it to her, and she's given herself an opportunity here. Salome Davidze with the serve and the chance to win the gold. And that will do it. Salome Davidze is your women's singles gold medal winner here at the APP Vlasic Classic. We missed her in Sacramento, but she showed up, picked up right where she was in Mesa. We'll hear from her when we come back. Too. Introducing the Ben Johns Junior Paddle and the Megalodon Paddle that both feature smaller grips, lightweight and durable construction, and a fun design that the kids are going to love. Ambassador of Original Penguin. Salome Davidze, your APP Velocic Classic champion here for women's pro singles. And Chad, how did she do it? Yeah, she was just too strong, really pinning Hesset into the corner, opening up those angles, and just proving too much here today.
And A.J. McCord is courtside with our winners. It is a very fun women's singles gold medal match here at the APP Vlasic Classic. Let's hear it up for these ladies. Great crowd here in Cincinnati showing up. Salome, congratulations on your gold medal. We're going to get to you in just a minute. Jenna, your first championship Sunday here on the APP Tour. I know you were battling through some injuries. Talk us through what you were having to deal with to play today. Yeah, so uh, I think all of my matches except for one went to three games on Thursday, and I lost the first on all of them. Uh, so I, I think I played about five hours of singles pickleball, hard, hard fought. So um, I'm dealing with a little bit of a strained hand. So it wasn't ideal conditions. Um, battled as best as I could, but Salome played incredible, and uh, congratulations to her. What is your biggest takeaway, though, from your first championship Sunday here in pickleball? I mean, it takes everything you got to get to here. Um, I mean, I left it all out of the court on Thursday, and uh, unfortunately, I just didn't have it today, but um, I'm, I'm proud to make it to here. Well, we had fun watching you all the way through. Ken, let's get her, her silver medalist. Give it up for Jenna Hesser, your silver medalist, here at the APP Vlasic Classic. And then let's get over to Salome Davidze, back like she never left. You were right here in Mesa. Now you have another gold medal around your neck. What does it mean to you? Um, it's, it feels great. You know, it feels, I love playing here. And Cincinnati was amazing. The crowd was amazing. Everybody was so nice. Thank you so much. And thank you to the sponsors. I want to congratulate you. You played incredible week. And um, I respect you so much for coming out and fighting today. I know what it's like to deal with injuries. And you still... You're like, if you can stand, you'll play. So thank you so much for coming out and playing. Um, happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. Uh, happy Mother's Day to all the moms in here. Uh, thank you for coming out and watching us. I really want to thank all the staff that we don't see on the TV and on the YouTube channel and everybody working week in, week out. Like, you don't see it, but I, I'm with you guys week in, week out, and I see it. So thank you, everybody, for working so hard. It certainly takes an entire team to make sure that we bring these fantastic APP tour stops to you. It does. It takes a village. For you, I know you weren't able to be in Sacramento. How much did you have to do to be ready for this Vlasic Classic? I got hurt um, before uh, Naples, and I was sad that I missed Sacramento, but it took two weeks of basically training it very hard every day and making sure my back is in place, so um, I'm really happy to be here right now. We're really happy to have you back, Ken. Let's get her her gold medalist. Congratulations, Salome Davidze is your women's singles gold medalist here at the APP Vlasic Classic. All right, Salome does it here. Undefeated, does not lose all weekend in singles. Chad, she was completely dominant all week and today. Yeah, and uh, the control that she had today, and she took a little bit of pace off to be able to hit those deeper balls. She really pinched Hesset into the corner to be able to open up the opposite side. So all around court movement and being able to hit those spots for Davidze today, really a big adjustment for her. And we talked about it before where she tries to hit her way out of some issues, but completely solid. Yeah, she played All week. absolutely incredible. Like you said, it was almost like she flipped the script uh, on Jenna Hesser where we thought Jenna was going to come forward. Well, she didn't as much, and Davide came forward. She pinned her in corners. She created angles. She did a great job today, and she's a well-deserving gold medalist. And so we have already crowned our men's singles gold medalist in Yates Johnson and Salome Davide in women's singles as our gold medalist. We have three more gold medals to hand out, but we're going to do that a little bit later on. 12 Eastern, join us live on CBS Sports Network. We're going to bring you the men's and women's doubles matches live there. So we'll see you then, and hopefully we get the same amount of caliber of matches in those ones. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, th I think it's, it's going up from here. Going yeah, we, here. we will. We start with the <laughs> ladies and then get into the men's and then finish with mixed. Oh, we're in for a great afternoon here in Cincinnati. It's going to be a lot of fun. We'll see you then live noon Eastern on CBS Sports Network. Take a while, I think the sky's the limit. It's the fastest growing sport. There's really no ceiling.
Hunter Johnson, Simone Jardine. Andre Diascu. Megan Buddy H. Johnson. Yeah. Are you kidding me right there? Oh, gotta go after him. Oh, what a point. Pickleball is my everything. It's pickleball, baby. Have fun. Oh my goodness. For more than two centuries, Cincinnati has been known as the Queen City. From engineering marvels that span the Ohio River to fountains designed to rival the grandeur of European wealth and sporting venues that beckon one and all to enjoy an afternoon of America's favorite pastime. Cincinnati prides itself on being a hub where big ideas and celebrations of culture always have a home. This week, one of the fastest growing facets of American culture hit the banks of the Ohio River with pickleball players flooding into Cincinnati from around the country. More than 900 participants coming in for the APP Vlasic Classic. Every single one of them fighting for a shot to be here on Championship Sunday. 700 amateurs, 200 professionals, 500 more participants than we had in last year's tournament here in Cincinnati. Welcome to the broadcast booth. I'm AJ McCord alongside Chad Edwards, Next Gen National Team Coach. I'll get that right the next time. <laughs> Dominic Catalano, former professional pickleball player and pro coach. It has been a fantastic first few days of action here at the APP Vlasic Classic, but of course it all comes down to this. Who is going to take home the gold? We had rain delays, venue changes, all of it. The players really having to fight to get to this moment. Yeah, and I mean, it's fantastic to see the sun out right now. Okay. So talk one, I'll talk the other. Whatever. Okay. All right, perfect. So you talk one, I'll talk two. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. <coughs> okay. Okay. Right. Wait, 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 Follow wait. Sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Where's my... Perfect. Okay. Next gen national team coach. I was right. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Well, I'm trying not to lie. Chadwick Kimball, Kenton Edwards. <laughs> <laughs> the Kembe Matumbo only has one, two names. For more than two centuries, Cincinnati has been known the fastest growing facets of American culture hit the banks of the Ohio River with pickleball players flooding into Cincinnati from around the country for the APP Vlasic Classic. More than 900 participants coming here to Cincinnati, 700 amateurs, 200 professionals. That is 500 more participants here this year than we had last year. The game is growing and only getting better. Welcome into the broadcast booth. I'm AJ McCord alongside Chad Edwards, Next Gen National Team Coach, and Dominic Catalano, former professional pickleball player and professional coach. It has been a fantastic first few days here in Cincinnati. The players have had to work through the rain delays, the change of venues, but already two players locking in their gold medals this morning. Yeah, Yates Johnson locking in his gold medal this morning 
He was playing absolutely phenomenal. Had it dialed in from the get-go, but he kind of flipped the script on his brother today. He played very soft, controlled in Sacramento to win his title. Today, he played with a lot of play, a lot of pace, a lot of great ground strokes from the forehand side, the backhand side, and he comes out and double dips his brother, taking the game to two out of three and taking the game to 15. Yeah, and then Salome Davidze came out and was extremely imp impressive. Something that we haven't seen from her, she was moving and coming forward much better than what we've seen in the past, plus the control. She was going corner to corner and pulling Hesset out wide and just dominated today. It's going to be extremely exciting to see how her game progresses throughout the rest of the season. Speaking of exciting, look what we have coming your way on this championship Sunday. Next up, we have the women's doubles, followed by the men's doubles, and then mixed uh, later on this afternoon. Let's get into this women's doubles matchup. Simone Jarjim and Paris Todd undefeated on championship Sundays here on the APP Tour this year, showing no signs of letting that stop today. There seems to be always one constant in the women's gold medal match, and it's Simone Jarjim and Paris Todd making their way through the winner bracket, a winner's bracket undefeated, and they're looking to make it five out of five on Championship Sunday this season with their fifth gold medal. Yeah, and they were tested yesterday in that winner's bracket final by Susanna Barr and Megan Fudge. They were actually down 8-3 going into game two. So look for Barr and Fudge to come out and be extremely aggressive today. They got that early lead being aggressive, but Jajing and Todd were able to reel them back in a little bit. It's a it's the second time this season that Barr and Fudge have played against Jajing and Todd. So they're looking for some redemption in this one. It's going to be a fantastic matchup, just like we have a venue here at the APP Vlasic Classic Championship. Sunday is looking beautiful here in Cincinnati. The rain has gone away. The sky has cleared 72 degrees here in Cincinnati, Ohio, and we are going to start handing out some hardware. The women's doubles gold medal match coming up next on CBS Sports Network. The APP Vlasic Classic is sponsored by Vlasic, the official pickle of the APP Tour. Skechers, exclusive shoe of the APP Tour. And Discount Tire, let's get you taken care of. Pickleball, I think the sky's the limit. It's the fastest growing sport. There's really no ceiling. Hunter Johnson, Simone Jardim, Andre Diascu, Megan Buddy H. Johnson. Wow. Are you kidding me right there? Oh, I'm gonna go after him. Oh, what a point. Pickleball is my everything. It's pickleball, baby. Have fun. Oh my goodness. For more than two centuries, Cincinnati has been known as the Queen City. From engineering marvels that span the Ohio River to fountains designed to rival the grandeur of European wealth. And sporting venues that beckon one and all to enjoy an afternoon of America's favorite pastime. Cincinnati prides itself on being a hub where big ideas and celebrations of culture always have a home. This week, one of the fastest growing facets of American culture hit the banks of the Ohio River with pickleball players from across the country flooding into Cincinnati. We had more than 900 participants here at the 2023 APP Classic 
Classic, all for the chance to play today. 700 amateurs, 200 professionals. That is 500 more participants than we had in last year's tournament. It is getting bigger and better and more exciting with every single match. Welcome into the broadcast booth. I'm AJ McCord alongside Chad Edwards, Next Gen National Team Coach, and Dominic Catalano, former professional pickleball player and professional coach these days. We have been through rain delays, change of venues, a ton of things to make sure that these players can get to this moment. And already, we've handed out two gold medals, three medals still to give away today. Let's talk about the men's single gold medal, though. It was all about Yates Johnson today. He had a lot of work to do this morning. He had to win the two out of three and then double dip his brother and win the game to 15. And he was in control the whole morning. He flipped it on his brother though, because in Sacramento, he played a lot of soft game, cat and mouse up at the kitchen line. Today, it was all about the ground strokes. He had the two handed backhand dialed in and he comes out on top. And Salome Davidze securing the gold medal for herself in women's singles. She was very impressive today. We always talk about her movement, her lack of, be of being able to come forward and really take those balls early. She was going corner to corner and really put it to Jenna Hesset today. A very impressive showing. So two gold medals already handed out. We're going to hand out three more here in Cincinnati. We're going to start things off here on CBS Sports Network with the women's doubles gold medal match. And this is a matchup that pickleball fans across the country have fallen in love with because it is such a good matchup every time this play they play and how fitting that on this Mother's Day we have three of the four players on the court with us first who are mothers as well so we're gonna get into their stories in just a little bit but let's talk about Simone Jarjim and Paris Todd because it's not championship Sunday on the APP tour without these two well you're right AJ there seems to always be one constant in the women's gold medal match and it's Simone Jarjim and Paris Todd making their way through the winner bracket, undefeated, unscathed, and they're looking to make it a five out of five on tour this year, making it five gold medals for them. But they got some work to do this afternoon. Yeah, and they were tested yesterday by Susanna Barr and Megan Fudge in the winner's bracket final. They lost game one and were down 8-3, but managed to come back for that one. This is the third matchup for Bar and Fudge against Judging and Todd. So they're looking for some redemption. Look for them to come out and be extremely aggressive and try to jump on Bar and, uh, sorry, Judging and Todd from the get go and really apply that pressure. We cannot wait to get these matches underway. This one in particular, it is a beautiful afternoon here in Cincinnati, Ohio. 72 degrees, the skies have cleared. It is time to hand out some hardware. The women's doubles gold medal match of the APP Vlasic Classic when we return. The APP Vlasic Classic is sponsored by Vlasic, the official pickle of the APP Tour. Skechers, exclusive shoe of the APP Tour. And discount tire, let's get you taken care of. We have the women's doubles gold medal match on one side. You have Paris Todd and Simone Jarjim. On the other, you have Megan Fudge and Susanna Barr. These two teams, very familiar with each other. I really think that this game comes down to execution. Who can execute their game plan better than the other? Simone Jarjim and Paris Todd take game one. Todd just systematically working far and fudge. First lead of the game for Megan Fudge and Susanna Barr. All tied here at 10. Barr and Fudge had four opportunities to end this. Couldn't do it. Paris Todd, Simone Jarjim, gold medalist in the women's doubles. And they look to do it again here in Cincinnati where the crowd has filled in and they are ready for some fantastic pickleball, which is what we always get when these two teams 
matchup. You see Simone Jardim and Paris Todd coming through the winner's bracket to punch their ticket to championship Sunday. Susanna Barr and Megan Fudge having to play after being defeated by Jardim and Todd in the winner's bracket final, but no less prepared for this moment. You're taking a live look at Paris Todd getting all warmed up. It's going to be Susanna Barr, though, starting us off with the serve. Todd, 25 years old, out of Fort Myers, Florida, originally from Southern California. Susanna Barr, top left of your screen with the serve. Strong dinking rally to get us started. That's a good start there for Barr and Fudge as they want to come out. They know what their game plan is. Jing and Todd know what their game plan is too. Again, it's about execution. Yeah, that ball sailing just a little deep. Fudge catching that one a little late. One of the things that Jing and Todd discussed last night after the winner's bracket yeah. final is that they have to stay patient in this. They can't pull the trigger too soon because Fudge and Barr are so good at the counterattack. Yeah, it's, a, it's a good point for them, Chad, is that they can't get into that because, like you're saying, everyone else they can get yeah. away with that, but Fudge and Barr is a little different. Can we talk about the familiarity of the two teams? They're going to see each other a lot on tour this year, and they already have. Just a little deep. Judging trying to use that offensive lob to push Bar and Fudge back from the kitchen. She's going to use that one a lot, and I would almost guarantee that Bar's going to do that on the opposite side. Yeah, you're exactly right, Chad, is you're going to see those offensive lobs, which have really become a part of pickleball over the last year or two with a lot of the players, especially on the female side of the game. Uh, just cutting that one off a little too soon. Swing came across the body, missed that one into the net. Brings us to 2-1-2, two, two, second serve here. And the speed up there from Megan Fudge working out. But you watch her slide. Fudge reads this and watch Fudge slide to the left so she can clear her forehand. Just a little hop step to the right. Beautifully done by Megan Fudge. Fudge coming all the way over to get that forehand and then the response by Simone Jarjim and Paris Todd sailing wide. Yeah, she just tried to cut that one. Thought she was going to attack it through the middle, but tried to pull Bar back out wide. Ooh, these firefights, we were in for some of them today. Fudge got just a little too much out in front. I think she was expecting a little more pace on that speed up. Nice job by Jarjing and Todd slowing it up down to just a little bit. Ooh, Fudge missing a sitter of an overhead right there. Todd and Jarjing having some difficulties keeping that ball down right now, but they're staying in the point. Santa Bar again with the speed up right at Paris Todd. Got that ball off Todd's paddle right there. Both Fudge and Bar turned around going, oh, that's got to go. That better go because it almost drops back there on the baseline. 2-4-2, two. Two, two, Todd with the serve. Yeah, nice deep low return there from Bar. Added a little bit of backspin to it so that ball slid through the court. Four, two, one. That spot in the middle is always a good one to yeah, go Yeah, I was going to say that the last time Judging tried to slide that one out wide. This time she goes back through the middle.
Good ball movement there by both Zha Jing and Todd. But Fudge's ball sat up just a little bit, Zha Jing with the inside out, and that elevated ball into the right shoulder of Bar creates that pop up. Whoa, big kick surf. That's going to bring Judging and Todd within one, tying this first game up. Wow, that's a good ball there from Fudge. And Jarjean let it go because I think she thought it was going to go wide because Fudge went to her left shoulder, but it does drop. She gets enough topspin on it to keep that ball in. Another good exchange there. The ball kicking off in the net court in the middle of that point kind of created some issues. But ultimately, Bar's ball sitting up just enough for Zha Jing to get on top of. Oh, and that's a good ball from Paris Todd because Fudge is stepping around trying to go for almost like a little half Ernie here. And watch Todd reads it and then speeds up right at her body. Yeah, Beautiful she, recognition. She, rec she recognized that the, the slide to the left, she's either going to go middle or she's going to keep following that body. And that's what she did on that one. That ball called out. We have our USA so. Pickleball officials here as line judges today. So here's, so. The, here's the issue is that the... Line judge calls it out, and Megan saw it in. And so because Megan saw it in, it's not overturned. It is a replay then because of the player overrule. So Georgine with the serve again, trying to build off of this lead that they have. Instead, it's a side out, so the ball goes back to the side of Susanna Barr. At least on that Fudge. ball, it wasn't a winner, clear <laughs> winner on that. Like, Fudge was going to play it, but. Those overheads from both Jarjing and Todd at a hard spot for Susanna Barr to get to right at her feet. Yeah, excellent job for the first two digs, but Todd adding a little bit of angle on that third one. Just a strong angle taken there. Yeah, a little bit of hesitation by Barr after that after that drop. See, she just hangs a little bit. Nice pressure there from Megan Fudge on the counter. Coming off the speed up from Paris Todd, but good position to get them in. Yeah, I think Todd was anticipating Fudge to slide to the left again. She did the opposite, slid to the right, cleared that back in. Just too much cut on that one. Judging was very aggressive with that kind of dink slash volley slash throw that ball out wide. <laughs> Call it a lot of things. That one's sailing, wa sailing long from Paris Todd. And that's a tough ball for Todd to hit like that because she's trying to hit up on it. She's got to brush it more, so she creates a lot more spin on it. And then it'll take some of the pace off that ball. She gets under it and hits too much on the sweet spot. It's 
a good spot. Maybe a little ambitious, Chad, from Zhao right yeah, there on that I'm, ball. That's a, that's a tough one. Even if she speeds that back up cross court, she's still moving out to the, to the back inside. She's got to try to come back middle. It would have been very tough to get back on. Susanna Barr unable to dig that dink out, get it back over the net. Puts them on their second serve. Point. Just a little long. That ball jumped off her paddle, oddly enough, because it wasn't a hard serve either, so she really had to hit that. Six, six, two. Brings us to a tie game here in game one. Women's doubles gold medal match. Just wide. So Zha Jing is really moving Fudge out wide, bringing you back, back in middle, then to go back out wide. That's that's part of that ball movement that we always talk about, creating opportunities. Nice hands from Megan Fudge. Jarjin, great job of jamming her up. She just gets that back over, but then Jarjin goes just a little wide cross court. Fudge had the around the post, had it been in though. A little help from the net court there. Bar getting a little jammed up as well. Fudge was upset with herself that she didn't volley that back at Todd because Todd was full boat to the kitchen line. Susanna Barr with a strong forehand speed up. That would have been the time I'd have liked to see Fudge try and jump in Ernie right there, is on this pressure dink from Barr, who we saw prior to that replay, where she pressured her and then Todd resets it down that line. That's the time I think she can go for that. When she's going and dinking just straight at her, it's going to be difficult because Todd's going to read that and try and go right at her body again. Six, seven, one. Susanna Barr with the serve. Fudge's ball sitting up just a little bit on that third shot drop. Zha Jing hitting that flatter ball. Bar not able to pick up. Yeah. Yeah, good one-two combination there from Todd. Again, she recognized that that Fudge was going to slide to the left, but that creates that hole in the middle if she doesn't do enough with it. Charging with the serve here. Yeah. And a strong angle from Susanna Barr, overhead winner. That's too good of an angle. We talk about overheads not going back to the baseline. You have to create that angle so your ball goes over the sideline, not back to the baseline. A good step in and attack there from Zha Jing. Todd, oh sorry, Fudge trying to pull her back out wide, but that ball was too low below the net. Another strong forehand from Susanna Barr. You'll notice a lot of stepping in in this match between these two teams, and that's because these two, unlike some of the pickleball pairings that we have coming up later today, play together all the time. So the communication between these two sets of partners is typically always on point. You don't often have a lot of miscommunication or confusion about whose ball it is. Yeah, just I like the idea though, because Todd saw Fudge coming for that. If she gets that in, that's trouble for Fudge and Barr because that's going to drop back at the baseline.
Darjing speeding it up that time. Yeah, and a mid-pace speed up there, but she created that ball by going out wide to Fudge and then going into the middle. Fudge not able to keep that one in front. Hmm. Way too big. A little bit, yeah. yeah. And that ties us up here in the women's doubles gold medal match. Timeout called by, I believe it was Simone Georgine and Paris Todd as Barr and Fudge work their way back. Don't forget today at 3 Eastern, catch day three of the PBR World Finals as the best bucking bull riders on the planet take center stage for this year's title and ultimate prize, the golden buckle here on CBS Sports Network. The crowd here in Cincinnati, we promised them a good doubles, women's doubles gold medal match, and so far they have been treated to it. Three ties already in this first game. Yeah, you got time out here from Jarjing and Todd as they're feeling, not feeling pressure, but they want to slow the momentum down right here um, because they've been in control most of this match, you know, consistently with a two-point lead or so. You know, Fudge and Barr would come back, kind of get within one, and then they'd pull back away. But now a nice time out here as we're all square, 8-8 eight, eight to 11, but still with Fudge and Barr serving. I believe they're on their second server here. Simone Jarjing, mother of two, Alexis and Landon. Back at home, I'm sure rooting on mama. Megan Fudge's kiddos are here in the crowd with her husband, Ryler, rooting her on. So, yeah, a couple of errors on the backhand side for Todd. It's almost like there's a little bit of indecision on, on whether she's going to attack it or not. Two went long, and now Jarjing and Todd burning their second time out. And you know, Chad, you mentioned it like just almost like in between, right? So the two that went long, it was like she's not brushing enough, like we talked about earlier. She's getting it too clean, and those are going long. And then the ball in the net, same kind of thing. Yeah, and just just adding a little too much pace on it as as well. You know, we we sort of over the last couple of days with somebody like Rob Nunnery where it's a medium pace ball. Yes, you're attacking it, you're throwing it, and it's getting elevated, but it's got enough spin and, an, uh, and, and a slower pace on it that they may let it go and then it ends up landing in the, in the, inside the baseline. Todd is going like full attack from down low and it's very, very difficult to keep that ball in the back of the court win that ball so low. And you mentioned it, we're going to see it next, and Rob Nunnery, one of the best at it. He looks like he's hitting full out, but he's brushing that ball so well that he keeps it at about 60%, keeps that ball, and we'll see that in the next matchup. He's playing with Andre Diascu in the men's doubles gold medal match, taking on Johnson Cola and Brendan Long. We'll bring that to you next. Women staying patient in this dinking rally. Until Fudge speeds it up at just the right time. Game one goes to Megan Fudge and Susanna Barr. Yeah, and it was a patient point right there, but the ball just getting elevated enough. Fudge could attack. He went into the left hip of Todd and judging way out of place. We'll be right back on CBS Sports Network. Women's Pro Double Final here at the APP Daytona Beach Open. Fire starts early here for Todd and Jarjean. This game so far has been a game of runs. Ah! 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 
Oh wow. my goodness. Paris from Todd. Todd. Are you kidding me right there? <laughs> it is too much Megan Fudge and Susanna Barr right there to finish it by a score of 11-9 in game number one. No way. She goes inside out. She shapes that around the post. Unbelievable move from Simone Jardim. Great adjustment there from Paris Todd and Simone Jardim between game one and game two. We are all tied at one game apiece here in the women's doubles gold medal match. Oh, Are you kidding me? There's a championship point for Jardine and Todd. Ah! And Jardine ends it with a huge forehand. And Paris Todd and Simone Jardine are your gold medalists here at the 2023 APP Daytona Beach Open. And I hope that uh, we get crowds like this. This is fun to play. Uh, in an atmosphere like that with all these people. Ladies Game two 15, about 15. to get underway here in the women's doubles gold medal match of the APP Vlasic Classic. This crowd has been engaged and ready for some fantastic pickleball, as makes sense when these ladies are on the court. Paris Todd with the serve to get us started. Well placed drop there by Susanna Barr. Wow, we talked about it earlier, Chad, where Jarjing and Todd look for that offensive lob. And Barr catches him napping a little bit. A yeah, good one two combination there from Jarjing. Going cross body on Barr and then going back at Fudge. That Daytona recap that we showed you marked the beginning of the reign of Simone Jarjing and Paris Todd in women's doubles gold medals here in the 2023 ATP Tour. Yeah. Susanna Barr and Megan Fudge, though, looking to unseat the queens here. Get game one and looking strong. Yeah, good setup there from, from Fudge. Pulling Jarjing out wide and then going back through them. I know you were going to say exactly the same thing. We always <laughs> do, Chad. We always do. All over the fence. And Paris Todd showing some frustration, which is not necessarily something we normally see a ton of from her, so demonstratively. But you can see Todd frustrated with the way th things are going. They do get the ball back. And I think uh, we're going to get a warning on Paris Todd here from the sideline referee. Is Michelle Baumgartner, our head referee. I don't believe she saw what happened. No. So. so Susanna Barr and Megan Fudge do take game one because they came through the back draw. If they win this second game or even if Todd and Jarjing force a third, they have to win two here and then we would go to a decisive game 215 because Simona Jarjing and Paris Todd have to be beat twice in order for Barr and Fudge to win the gold. So they're up 2-0 in this second game after taking game one. Yeah, I think it was just a discussion between the yeah. referees. May have, been a, may have been a warning. It wasn't intentional to kick the ball over the fence. No, it's frustration. I, I totally get it. I mean, it's not, she wasn't trying to hurt anybody with it. It did go over the fence, but again, we play on and fudge and Three, zero, Bar continue here early on in game two to be in control. Yeah, good angles from Xia Jing there. Sideline to sideline. She stepped in and was going to have no one else take control at this zero, point. She stepped one. right over that center line, puts it away. Susanna Barr sending that one a bit long, so Zhejiang and Todd get on the board here in game two. One, one. We see this one just sail a little bit. Bar swing up on it, tough to keep down. Oh. 
strong angle from Susanna Barr, but the return from Jarjing and Barr leaves the overhead into the net. Yeah, the more times you put a ball back and put it up, Two, three, force them to hit that overhead three, four times, much, much more difficult. Some love off the net there from Paris Todd's hit into the body of Megan Fudge, and not much you can do about that one. That's a great answer here from Simone Jarjing and Paris Todd. Here's tight back up. And Jarjing catching that one a little late. to get that shape and that roll. It just has to be out in front a little bit more. Yeah. Little in between there from Barr, whether she wanted to speed it up or stay in that dink, she kind of half speeds it up. It's right to the sweet spot of Paris Todd. Yeah, good spot there from Bart. Jajin couldn't move up on that ball off of the net as fast as she wanted to because it was going to create extra spin, so it kept her out wide. Bart took advantage of it, went back through the middle. Great too spin good. on that ball. <laughs> it's just too good. It's <laughs> dirty right there. That was a two-step. Yeah, no. Nah, not even going to try. Yeah. Susanna Barr leaving that dink just short. So we have... The ball back on the side of Simone Jarjim and Paris Todd. 4-3-1, which means we're on our first serve here from Todd. And yep. again, that targeted spot on Megan Fudge, so hard to defend. Well, Fudge was off balance after, after the attack at Jarjim. Then she went at Todd again and it put her even further off balance. Good spot right there from Susanna Barr. That's like a almost a half speed up, half dink right there, and it goes right at the left foot of Jarjing. That's tough for Fudge to back up on. She could take that ball out of the air and volley that with a two-hander, but she backs up, and all that does is give Jarjing more time to see a ball if she can put that ball away. Todd got stuck with the feet there. And what we're seeing, and it's happened to Barr a couple of times, and now it's happened to Todd a couple of times. They're getting pinched, and they're getting a, a, a little stuck in that position. So when the ball goes into the body of the left foot and the hips don't open, you end up getting jammed up. You can't lift that ball and end up pushing it into the net. Miss hit on the backhand from Fudge. Again, she's there. These are balls you have to execute, especially against Todd and Jardine. It was a bullet of a drive from Bar, about an inch above the net. Take another look at it. Six, three, one. Paris Todd oh, thinking it was out there. He's yeah. he was going out here. Right. Yeah, it looked like it might have been on the line. It looked like it 
Paris like it Cup. slid on the line. Yeah, thinking yeah. it was out on the baseline over there. I think that's why she misplayed it, because it skips yeah. right off that line. Second serve, though, and Susanna Barr forcing the side out here. Really strong return. Yeah, big forehand there from Barr. Megan Fudge to serve originally from Dusseldorf, Germany, which she and her family now call the state's home. It's a great setup there by Jarjing and Todd on the forehand side. She is not going to miss this. She went as deep as she could go, though. <laughs> that, yeah. was, that was pretty close. Second serve here from Susanna Barr. That would have been close to going out, too, on the volley from Todd. But, again, that ball gets on you so quick, and it's right there. Hard to hold off. We've also seen a few balls drop pretty quickly, so that's a rather go down swinging, it seems like, with these women. Jing tried to rush up to the kitchen too fast on that one. They've done an excellent job getting back into the point, getting that ball down. But you see Zha Jing after this one, she's still moving, coming forward. So what is Jing almost with the cleanup there after Paris Todd misses, but can I get that ball over the net? So it's back to the side of Susanna Barr and Megan Fudge. The ball almost hit Paris Todd twice. Once on the volley from Fudge and Barr, and then the second time from Jarjing trying to get it back up and over. Just wide. Fudge had an open court. The lob from Barr had twisted Todd and Zha Jing around. Zha Jing going back to try to get this one. Todd just throwing up the backhand. Good roll, good attack, good setup. Side out forced here, so it's Paris Todd with the first serve. Moved to Florida relatively recently to pursue pickleball full time. And she's a staple here on the APP tour. And seemingly on championship Sunday with Simone Jojima at her side. Good move from Fudge. I don't mind the idea here from Jarjing with this law because again, they're dialed in, but it's over the shoulder forehand side of Megan Fudge. That's a tough spot. A really quick side out again from Megan Fudge and Susanna Barr. Yeah, Todd a step behind on that one. Hit, a, hit an excellent drop. Didn't move up fast Three, enough behind one. it or far enough behind it. I shouldn't say fast enough. Again, we talk about it all the time is you get into these firefights and you're going waist high to waist high, chest high to chest high. It's who can get the ball down at the feet first. And right there, they exchange four or five shots and then Paris Todd at the feet of Megan Fudge, and that's the winner. Ooh. Excellent defense there from Fudge. Able to work her way back up. It just leaves the ball a little high. Todd taking full advantage going into the body on that one. A perfect spot, right? Nothing personal, just business here. Good spot from Barr. Todd just a step behind on that. I mean, judging just a step behind on that one. Six, three, two. A 
rare miscommunication a little bit in the middle there as both Fudge and Barr go for that one. Well, that's kind of the, that was the, the ball from judging that created that mix up. It's time now to take a look at our Vlasic Instant Classic. We've talked about the matchups between these two. Let's head to Sacramento. From Sacramento to Cincinnati, and next we head to the Big Apple. The sixth stop of the 2023 APP Tour is the Boca Raton APP New York City Open. That is going to be a really fun matchup. If you're in New York, make sure you come down and check it out. And looking at the rest of the summer, some really cool spots. The APP is going to go, so we hope to see you out there enjoying some pickleball and all that we have to offer here on the APP Tour. Well, it doesn't get much better than the Billie Jean King Tennis Center in New York City for some pickleball. We'll flip that facility over to pickleball for a week long. Head out to beautiful Newport Beach following that. So, similar position to game one here for Zha Jing and Todd. Good coverage in the middle from Megan Fudge. Again, Jarjing has that flick down the middle, but Fudge closes that off. Three, seven, one. And they get a big side out. GP, good defense. there from Susanna Barr and Megan Fudge. Just a fantastic construction. I was going to say, if Barr and Fudge didn't, if didn't finish that point, they were going to really kick themselves because I thought Fudge early on had a couple balls she should have put away. Wow. Great point. Probably best point of the match so far. Everyone here in Cincinnati just holding their breath, waiting for that point. There were so many changes of direction, change of pace. That's what we expect when these two teams come together. Fudgeon Bar getting into a difficult position there. The ball Four, seven, never really two. got down below that net. That ball off the paddle of Paris Todd just kind of skidded. She hits it so flat and it stays low. You watch Fudge has some issues. Trying to get underneath this last one. Simone Jarjing with the serve. Good hands from Fudge. 
Judging stepped in, tried to be aggressive with that attack. But again, it leaves the opening behind it. I like the move. Oh, it's yeah. there, but unfortunately, it's an all or nothing. If you don't get it, you're out of position. Deep serve from Paris Todd. <laughs> this time, she takes takes a different uh, different spot on the attack. She goes more into the body of Fudge, so Fudge can't create that angle behind her. The only option Fudge has is to try to block back down the line, it's, and Judging stays in it. Side out forced here. Megan Fudge and Susanna Barr with the ball back, a chance to dig into this lead that Georgina and Todd have built here in game two. The speed up from Paris Todd, Susanna Barr more than ready for it. Well, and that's the spot you want to go on Todd. Todd has a tendency to pinch middle very heavy, even though that's her backhand. So if you go outside hip, that's the spot to go on her in that particular moment. But that forehand of Paris Todd is just so powerful. Moves Barr and Fudge to their second, second serve. Trailing by three here in game two. And the side out there by Simone Jorging and Paris Todd. Barr and Fudge can't get any closer than three here. Every time they get within three, it seems Jorging and Todd will pull away and extend back to four. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with the speed up there, but it, there's the hesitation from Todd on that second ball. And let's it get too deep. Either if you're going to reset it, take it early. If you're going to attack, take it earlier. Good reach in from Fudge. But where's the spot? Again, it's right hit because she's sitting heavy on that. So when she tries to reset, Paddle's got to come across her body to try and get to that right hip. That one going just a bit wide from Paris Todd. Six, eight, one. Take a good look at it right there on our replay. Fudge not quite getting underneath that ball. So it'll be Susanna Barr with the serve. She's based out of Six, eight, two. Boise, Idaho. Oh, two missed thirds there. Tough to do when you're trying to close a gap. Her son Porter got a chance to see her win in Sacramento. Not in the crowd here today, but undoubtedly rooting mom on at home on this Mother's Day. <laughs> Jarjean flying behind Paris Todd, thinking that ball might get past her here. But then it leaves the whole left side of the court wide open. Oh. So Todd actually took a little bit off that attack, though. Gets it elevated. Obviously not meaning to hit bar up around the face. Too much, too much angle, pushing that one wide. Set up there from judging, going cross body on Ba. Six, nine, two. Oh. 
Here we go, yet again, like you were talking about, this is the first time in a minute that Megan, Megan Fudge and Susanna Barr have managed to get within a few points here of Simone Jargim and Paris Todd. They're trailing 7-9 here in game two. CBS Sports supports Mental Health Awareness Month. As we are sitting in this timeout here in game two of the women's doubles gold medal match. It is a beautiful Mother's Day. You're taking a look at Simone Jargim, a mother originally from Brazil. Like I mentioned, her son and daughter, Alexis and Landon, rooting mom on at home. Potentially. Potentially. Maybe. <laughs> you might have some insight into that. Yeah, usually they're here on the road with us, but... Um, we had to leave them at home for a couple of weeks. They had exams, and school also called and said, hey, your kids are missing <laughs> way too much school. Don't they know? Yeah, So, but that will be with us in New York. Ryler DeHart and Megan Fudge taking a little bit different approach with the family. Their kiddos in the timeout with mom, Lily, and JR. Over there giving mom advice, and those two actually have an RV, and they've bought the RV a while ago. They've been on every stop of the APP tour, but this trip to Cincinnati, the first one that they actually got to drive it, and I asked Megan Fudge, what was that like? And she said, you know what? It was pretty fun. She feels like it's a great chance for her kids to get an, ex an opportunity to see the country in a way that they wouldn't. They pulled off in Tennessee, did a great hike. She showed me videos of a beautiful waterfall. So pretty cool for Megan Fudge. She says that her kids and having them on the road always gives her perspective because I guarantee in that time out, they weren't telling mom, great job on that point. They were probably asking, when can I get a hot dog? something along those lines <laughs> she says she all, they always bring her back to the fact that her first job is mom and that's the most important one Susanna Barr with great placement that's on that a point. huge two hand to put away right there from Susanna Barr she's anticipating this speed up in the middle and she goes right behind Jarjean Fudge and Barr with a chance to tie things up here in game two Ooh. can't get it done Jarjean got away with one right there well, then she got thrown off. The ball clips the tape off the drop from Barr. And then Fudge has that ball sit up for her. Megan Fudge watching that one all the way to the line and must have just painted it. We'll take another look. Yeah, Zhejing sets up like she's going to speed that one up through the middle. Actually, a couple of inches inside the line, but big inside out forehand there. Fudge. Kind of squeeze the middle, anticipating that speed up. I love how you say big inside out forehand. That was a big inside out forehand dink. I know, but it was like, a big, a big, like a big huge, sell. A big like sell. Huge sell. <laughs> and so it sets up game point here in game two of the women's doubles gold medal match between Simone Jorgim and Paris Todd, Susanna Barr, and Megan Fudge. Jorgim and, Ta Jorgim and Todd doing a good job recovering from that game one and coming back to their game plan. It's just seems. what we expected, right? We yep. expected a battle here, and it's been so eerily similar. We've seen Fudge and Barr come out and be dominant in game ones before, but then it's always Jorgim and Todd who have the answer in two and three. We'll see what happens here. And this is a duo that has played together for so many events. Paris telling me yesterday she was actually a little intimidated to play with Simone at first. You wouldn't know it now for the chemistry that they have on the court. But Simone is somebody who so many people look up to, so many women in particular. And she takes that honor very seriously. But now the two of them with the opportunity at game point here. And that will do it. The overhead from Paris Todd finding the spot in the middle. Neither Bar nor Fudge could get to. So Simone and Paris taking game two here of the women's doubles gold medal match. We head to game three when we come back from Cincinnati. Play of the day. Yeah, this offensive lob bar not quite getting it deep enough. Big overhead from Paris Todd there to finish off game two. 
it's not a bad spot, right? She just kind of left it a little bit too much to the left. She's got to get that up and over her backhand so she can't get that forehand on it. But it's not a bad idea at all. So Paris, Paris Todd and Simone Jarjing winning game two. And so normally we have just a few seconds in between the games, but Paris Todd has requested a trainer take a look at something that is nagging her. So you see her getting worked on over there. So in the meantime, let's get to know her partner a little bit better, Simone Jarjim, on this Mother's Day. My name is Simone Jardim. I am 43 years old. I was born and raised in Santa Maria, Brazil, but now I live in Naples, Florida. I've been playing pickleball since 2015. It seems like yesterday I was coaching tennis at Michigan State uh, and one day friends were playing pickleball. He came to the tennis court and he said, you need to come play pickleball with us. I have never heard of pickleball, didn't know what it was, uh, but at any rate, I I was busy with season and plus I, I had a young kid and I was like, I, have, I don't have time. Uh, but he was very persistent and, and one day I said, okay, I'll go play. We played singles and I was like hooked. I was like, wow, I wanna do this as much as I can. Uh, and then one day I had an intervention. They called me and said, we signed you up for a tournament. And I was like, what? I was like, yep, you're playing a pickleball tournament. I didn't even know those existed. So we played the tournament and I was like, wow, when is the next one? Get me to the next one. Simone Jarjim and Paris Todd are your women's doubles gold medal winners. Winning the Triple Crown a couple of times has always been special for me, but that's because of the people that are there. Not so much because of winning, but because of the people that were there to be a part of it. But also last year, it's pretty cool playing in New York. I would say that that was, you know, flushing medals. Uh, it was a pretty unique experience. So it's just like little things like that. The, those opportunities have been uh, pretty sensational. I think that this sport has no limits because it has no age, it has no gender. You can play, like, I do not know any sport that you can bring together such a variety of people. Pickleball is just a great community to be around because people really cared about us and about our kids and getting to know us. We get adopted by a lot of people, a lot of families, and with Pickleball, like, the growth of it has been amazing. I mean, it's been nothing but welcoming. I, trust me, I almost quit. I was ready to retire um, last year, uh, and I think I would have had it not the kids have been excited about traveling. I just feel that it has definitely made a significant change for me being on the road with them versus not. Um, I think it comes a day where they don't want to do it, I'm done, um, and then I'll just focus on being a mom, which is ultimately my number one priority. My goal, the biggest thing is, is that one, I want to keep enjoying, I want to have fun. I'm doing this for myself and nobody else. Uh, honestly, truthfully, uh, I enjoy competing so, so much, but ultimately I want to enjoy the process. If I'm not enjoying myself, then I can't do it. I won't do it. That's just the way I work. Uh, I need to be completely, fully engaged and in the moment. And that's how I function. Engaged and in the moment, Simone Jarjim has made her mark on this 2023 APP Tour. You see her sitting there with four gold medals already coming into this week. Her partner, Paris Todd, with seven gold medals coming into this week. They would both love to add another one. Here today, Paris Todd getting worked on by the trainers. You're told she has some blisters, so she's getting retaped. Game three, when we come back. And here we are back at the APP Vlasic Classic, getting you ready for the third game of this women's doubles gold medal match. If Paris Todd and Simone Jarjim get the win here in this game to 11, they will win the gold medal. Susanna Barr and Megan Fudge, if they win, they'll send us to a championship tiebreak game, a game to 15. 
So a lot on the line here for these women. Susanna Barr getting us started. Constructed point there from Todd going into the body, into the feet of Barr, getting that, forcing that pop up. That's a tough spot right there for Fudge to pull the trigger on because, again, high part of the net. Todd and Jarjean keep that ball nice and low. To get that up and over, if you want to get any pace on it, more than likely that ball is going to go long. Late call there, but it was called out by our line judge. <laughs> he called it out 10 seconds later. That was interesting call. So it gives Simone Jarjean and Paris Todd the first point of this, excuse me, second point of this game three. Two zero one. Two zero one. To echo what our head officials just said. Uh, getting a little too wristy on that last one. You saw the paddle face lay all the way back. She tried to slap it Three, zero, back one. down, but once that paddle face is pointing to the sky, almost guaranteed that ball's going to go out. Good counter there from Barr. Not a bad speed up from Paris Todd right there. It's a little risky, but Just wrong it, spot. It was much better though, right? Much better Three, speed. Zero, if two. Barr lets that go, that's going to stay in this time. Making the sure what <laughs> Looking at the kitchen going, huh, heavy, that's a little different than I thought it was going yeah, to. Yeah, heavy spin, and it kind of just sat up. She thought it was going to slide into her, but didn't go anywhere. Jarjean looked like she slipped almost on the foot of Paris Todd as she stepped in the middle here. She did, they almost got tangled up. So it sends the ball back to the side of Susanna Barr and Megan Fudge. Barr with the serve. Good pressure there from both Jia Ching and Todd. Zero four two. Paris Todd with the overhead winner right at the feet of Megan Fudge. Yeah, a tough spot to throw up a lob when your partner is charging the kitchen line right there. see the stat on how many times you say I got it and you missed the ball. It's, it's like <laughs> gotta be like in the 80, oh, 80 it's percent. Very, very high. It's like voodoo to say I got it and pick ball. Oh. Ooh. Just missed that back baseline does Paris Todd. Again, Fudge and Barr, if they let that ball go, they're both looking back on oh that better go long. Just does. Zero for one. Forcing the side out. That one skid right on the middle line. Zero four two. Oh. Point. Judging pushing that one just a little wide. First point of the game for Megan Fudd. Missed by a couple of inches. Megan Fudge and Susanna Barr. Yeah. 
Good roll there by Todd, putting the pressure on Barr as she's coming forward. Doesn't try to do a whole lot with it, but creates the angle and the spin. That's a, that's a dangerous spot right there from Fudge, but again, Todd just getting a little too big right there, trying to do a little too much. Four, one, two. It's that high lofted drop. You think it's going to keep going, but just drops down below that net. Bar trying to fully extend. That's something that she can even let bounce, and what it's going to do is just sit up. It's not going to push her any deeper away from the kitchen line. Of course, she, she has to be very careful, make sure her toes don't cross that kitchen line before the ball bounces. One, five, one. Fudge thought that fourth shot from Todd was a little bit deep. She paused after she made her fifth. Two, five, one. Gets the point though. So it's two, five, one. Good movement from Fudge right there. I think she's got to put away that first one though on the forehand. She read that on a beautiful drop from two, Barr. Five, then gets crossed up coming back to the backhand. It's a little too big on that last one. Trying to get enough on it to get it past Jarjing and Todd. And then just floats it a little too long. And that's what happens when every ball's coming back. You try and overdo it a little bit. That's what happened right there. Five, two, one. So much technique in those firefights to make sure that you stay in it, but also know when to get out when the ball starts sailing like that. <laughs> what work from Todd and Jarjing getting back in that point as it was an assault from Barr and Fudge, but they get back in, get to a reset, almost a neutral position. working out for Simone Jarjin just painting that sideline. Yeah, well constructed point there from Jarjin. Got that ball high enough that she could attack Bar and then went behind Fudge after two balls. So we have a timeout called here on the court in game three. Simone Jarjin and Paris Todd trying to end it right here in this third game to 11. Get round-the-clock coverage of all your favorite soccer leagues as CBS Sports brings the beautiful game to your home through live matches, highlights, and so much more. The Golasso Network is streaming now. The crowd filling in beautifully here in Cincinnati on this 
Mother's Day. Simone Jarjing and Paris Todd talking a little bit about what was working and maybe what was hitting them in that one. Here's the classic firefight of the match. We've had some good ones, but this one turning up the heat. Yeah, again, a well-constructed point. Ball set up just enough for Zha Jing to start that firefight and go at bar. Then she went behind Fudge a couple of times and ultimately getting that one off the end of the paddle. And you watch her though, what she does is she knows exactly where the holes are. So again, even in a firefight, or a lot of people will get kind of hectic and just look to go back over and punch it back over. Jarjing sees that Fudge is pinched in the middle so hard, she can go behind her with about a 70% ball. She does get the winner, and then it's end change on their terms, up 6-2 here in game three for this gold medal match. So the two switching ends, like you mentioned, Dom, Susanna Barr, a U.S. Army veteran playing with Megan Fudge. She actually signed up for the Army on September 10th, 2001, the day before September 11th. She is a staple here on the APP Tour, a very proud U.S. Army veteran. She says one of her favorite parts about traveling with the APP Tour is getting a chance to reconnect with some of her friends from her Army days. And we certainly thank her for the, her service. And wish her a happy Mother's Day. Nice drop there from Todd again. Both Judging and Todd are elevating their drops a little bit, but they're getting them to really stay low enough below the net by the time it gets to Bar and Fudge. The ball off the tape just a little. Fudge can't control it. Excuse me, Bar can't control it. Goes long. Jarjing and Todd continuing to roll here in game three. That's a tough ball for Fudge to miss right there. Receivers. There's also two, two, a little bit of a delay from Bar coming up after that return. Jarjing and Todd's third probably bounced two, three feet, potentially three feet behind the kitchen line there. Sets up Simone Jarjing and Paris Todd to be just two points away from winning what would be their fifth APP Women's Doubles Gold Medal of this 2023 season. They have yet to be unthroned. Dethroned, I believe. I, was, I, I wasn't going to correct what we were gonna say. I was, wasn't going to correct That was very sweet. I'll correct myself. Dethroned. I, I can't speak English anyway. <laughs> Either way, they are the queens of the women's doubles here on the APP Tour. And at the APP Classic Classic, you're getting a great look at the fantastic facilities we he have here at the Sawyer Point Pickleball Complex on the banks of the Ohio River just out of frame. What a beautiful spot. Take a walk down the river in between matches. Check out the sponsor village. A lot of fun things to do here at the APP Vlasic Classic. Paris Todd getting us started with the serve. A good switch from defense to offense there from Zha Jing. You saw her continue to work her way forward, just trying to put that ball into the kitchen. Then once she gets it down, steps up, pulls the trigger. It just missed Megan Fudge's right shoulder right there. And the baseline. It was really, really close to being the gold medal point for Simone Jarjing and Paris Todd. Yeah. 
but what a wow. point put together by Simone Jardim and Paris Todd. Here's the get from Megan Fudge coming all the way across. Yeah, Fudge recognized that one straight away. Barr was never going to have a chance of getting there because she was flat-footed, but fantastic two, two, get from two. Megan Fudge. So the ball back on the side now of Simone Jardine and Paris Todd. Match point on the paddle of Paris Todd. And there you have it. Simone Jardine and Paris Todd are your 2023 APP Vlasic Classic Women's Doubles Gold medalist the champs remain undefeated we'll hear from them when we come back on cbs sports network and your champions here at the app velocity classic Paris Todd and Simone Jardin. Yeah, Simone Jardin and Paris Todd getting stronger as the match went on. You saw a couple of big balls through the middle, but the finish there from Paris Todd and the customary cuddle from Todd and Jardin. And we'll throw it down to AJ McCord, who is on court with our gold and silver medalist. Take it away, AJ. Thank you so much. First and foremost, I want this crowd to give it up a very happy Mother's Day and congratulations on a fantastic women's doubles gold medal match. Simone Jardine and Paris Todd, we're going to get to you in just a minute. But first, Megan and Susanna, you guys have fought so hard throughout this entire tournament. What was the goal? What was the strategy coming into today? Well, for, first and foremost, I just want to say happy Mother's Day to everybody out there and including my mom at home in Germany. Um, obviously, I'm really proud to be, have three moms on this court today, um, and thanks to the APP Tour for providing an environment for us moms to play and compete and have multiple hats at the same time and uh, feel that we, uh, we, we are supported. So thank you so much to Ken and his, his staff as well. So uh, obviously, congrats to the winners uh, another time, uh, but uh, we'll get you next time. And both of you mothers, like you said, I know your kiddos in the crowd, yours rooting you on at home. What does it mean for you to get a chance to come out here, work against the best in the game, be the best in your game as moms? Yeah, I mean, it's incredible that we can be out here doing this. And um, I can't really beat what Megan said. But thank you, Cincinnati, for having us as well. It's been a fantastic crowd here in Cincinnati. Give it up to your women's doubles silver medalist at the 2023 APP Vlasic Classic. Congratulations to Megan Fudge and Susanna Barr. And now it's time for you two. Yet again, Simone Jarjing and Paris Todd, your women's doubles gold medalist. You two have been just the queens of the doubles court so far in this 2023 APP Tour. How have you guys made sure you get better and stay ahead of the rest of competition every single week? Uh, I'm not sure about better but I think it's more so like mentally tough no matter what happens I mean of course we know that we have we we are wearing red we have a target it's we're like bullseye oh sorry red, okay is this red no. uh, that would be a resounding no from the crowd my friend that's an orange it's an orange it's an orange <laughs> I lose I lose okay she's right again uh, no uh, it's just, it's just that we know that that target is going to be on us. So we just got to be ready to embrace it and face the challenge and fight like two pit bulls out here. And fight you did, Paris. I got a chance to talk with you yesterday just about what it means to get a chance to play with Simone, how much you look up to her as a woman, as a mom, as a female in sports. What does it mean to win your fifth gold medal with her? You know, first of all, it's just amazing to be on the court with three moms, Susanna, Megan, and Simone. So the fact that the sport is just allowing mom to come and play and play in this professional sport, I mean, it's amazing. It just shows how amazing the sport is and just bringing more people in. So that's just our goal at the end of the day. So thank you, everyone, for coming out. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, Nana. I know you're watching. 
Congratulations, you two. Ken, let's get these women our gold medalists. Really quick, Simone. I'm not sure if my kids are watching, uh, but I really miss you guys. I feel like I haven't seen them like wor worst mother of the month. That's me. Uh, so I, I really, uh, I miss them. And uh, my mom, Feliz Dia das Mães. No, I don't think there she's watching. <laughs> but if she is back at home in Brazil, Happy Mother's Day. How, how do you say? Feliz Dia das Mulheres. Mines. 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 Young Cincinnati Reds fan here in Cincinnati. We'll be back next up here on Championship Court. Men's Pro Doubles coming at you live here from Cincinnati. Welcome back to the 2023 APP Vlasic Classic. Earlier this week, a really special moment here in Cincinnati. APP believes in pickleball for all, and so they brought pickleball to the special needs community here in Cincinnati. APP co-founder Ken Herman leading a clinic with 10 Special Olympians and volunteers to help better their game. Wonderful things are happening all over the country with pickleball in the Special Olympics community, including this amazing story out of the state of Missouri. We had a 5K today as well, so it's been quite busy here at the Y, but hey, it's what it's all about, right? It's about community. Yep, I'm getting these real quick. My name is Aiden Pedersen. I'm from Fulton, Missouri. I was originally born in Boise, Idaho. When my parents moved here in 05, there originally wasn't a program in Fulton. So my dad kind of took it upon himself to establish one with a parent of an athlete. And uh, he brought me to practice when I was goodness, four or five years old at the time. I had worked for Special Olympics Idaho in Boise, Idaho for six years as the director of marketing and development and fell in love with the program. When we moved here, word got out that I was involved with Special Olympics in Idaho, and they said, uh, would you consider helping us start a Special Olympics program here in Fulton? The goal was to start a program that was year-round uh, so that athletes could participate in the sports we offer here locally throughout, uh, throughout the year. And now we have pickleball. It's, it's such a fulfilling program. And especially in a small town like Fulton, it's not Kansas City, St. Louis, Springfield, or anything like that. It's such a small community to where everyone knows everyone, right? You know, it's 13,000 people. You know, those athletes, they look forward to seeing you and vice versa. When you, you know, miss practice or anything like that, there's a certain part of your week where it just doesn't feel like it's fulfilled. This is Chris. He's a special Olympics athlete here in Missouri. He does every sport you can think of, from pickleball, tennis, basketball, flag football, and even more. He's going to come play some pickleball later on. Yeah, that's Chris. When Serena Williams and Venus and Federer and Nadal, that's the same way we're playing pickleball. The people are great. They're nice. You make friends easily in Special Olympics. There's something in Special Olympics called the Inclusion Revolution. And as a coach, my job is to make sure that the athletes feel proud of their accomplishments, feel confident in who they are. It's, it's a sport for life. Um, one of the things that we talk about in Special Olympics on our team is training for life. And what pickleball offers is the opportunity to train for life, to see friends, and to learn a sport that you truly can do whether you're eight or 88 years old. There's that sense of community, regardless of your ability, that you can continue to grow and have that network of people that love the same sport that you do and want to do it day after day, month after month, year after year. I mean, pickleball is, I mean, we already know it's such a social sport. And Special Olympics and pickleball in a weird way are almost two entities that reflect each other in different ways, but have a common goal of bringing people together. What I appreciate the most is the relationships that evolve over the years. 
the friendships, the learning curve that comes with, with trying something new, the sense of community that comes with bringing new people into a sport like pickleball that didn't exist in our program with Special Olympics Missouri until just recently. I am so proud of my son Aiden for he and I to be co-commissioners for Special Olympics Missouri in the sense for his love and the vision of the growth that we can see. I appreciate his devotion to the program, uh, to be a co-commissioner with me, to love and embrace pickleball like he does. And it's through his enthusiasm that it makes it infectious and everyone wants to play the sport. There are only certain things you can teach as a parent but he has taken this onto his own and become his own man. We welcome you back live to the 2023 APP Vlasic Classic. You're getting a look at the men's doubles gold medal match, getting all warmed up between Andre Diascu and Rob Nunnery taking on John Sincola and Brendan Long. We'll have game one when we come back on CBS Sports Network. Andre Diescu taking the court with his doubles partner in Pesa Tioni. They're going to be taking on Ryler DeHart and Rob Nunnery. This has been a great weekend for DeHart and Nunnery. I'm looking to, for them to challenge Diescu and Tioni here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Seventh game point is the one to do it. Ryler DeHart and Rob Nunnery take game one here in the men's doubles gold medal match. Oh. Ooh, the ups there by Tioni. And there you have it. Game two goes to Pesa Tioni and Andre Diescu. Yeah. Right on the heart and Nunnery put that game away, which means we are heading to a decisive game four, first to 15. Match point on the paddle of Pesa Tioni. It is game and match for Andre Diescu and Pesa Tioni, your gold medalist here at the APP SunMed Sacramento Open. Andre Diescu has established his dominance as a doubles partner, and here he is in the men's doubles gold medal match. This time, he's with somebody new, playing with Rob Nunnery, but those two making their way through the winner's bracket. They're going to take on John Sincola and Brendan Long, the three seed here at the APP Vlasic Classic. What are you guys looking forward to the most in this match? Uh, I think for Sincola and Long to have a better start than what we saw yesterday. Uh, or, or, yeah, it was yesterday. Uh, Friday. Yesterday. Yesterday. I'm getting confused on my days. But, yeah, they came out slow start. Three out of their four matches going into three games. Oh, a little miscommunication there from Diascu and Nunnery. But yeah, it took a while for Sincola and Long to settle in and get back into their strategy. Oh, nice ball right there by Diascu. Going middle first and then has Long pinched middle. Goes backside on him for the winner and the quick side out. Zero one one. Long standing a little too tall there on that one. You saw the paddle just lay back. That paddle face facing the sky. Tried to flick it. Oh. Nunnery sending that one. Bit high. Brendan Long does get out of the way of it, though. One, one, two. Oh. 
the easiest ball in the punch right there. None, <laughs> none are he just missing the easy reset. Andre swatting flies right there at the kitchen line, getting everything back. One, one, one. Brendan Long with the serve. Bottom right of your screen. Good spot there from Diascu. Using his height and his reach for one, one, full two. advantage right there. Foot fall called. Can't put your foot in the kitchen. So the ball bounces first. Inside the kitchen. Nice to have the different colors on this court. Wow, Diascu fighting the ball off the tape right there. Getting it back to Sincola. Sincola trying to go hot and heavy again. But Diascu... Little backhand punch winner down the line. So Sincola and Long do manage to get a little lead here going. One, two, one. Put the ball back on the side. Andre Diascu with the serve originally from Romania. Good reach in there from Nunnery. Using the wrist, using the spin. Two, two, one. Oh, that ball stayed down. That never came up. As soon as that hit, it flattened out on Nunnery. He was expecting that ball to come up and he can get an easy reset, but the ball never did. Two, two, two. is a little frustrated with that one. He read it. Sincola was way two, out of two, position one. right there, but was able to get that ball just over the net. Diascu couldn't get the honey. Which ball went out? The return? Call stand. You call ball in. So Three Brendan points. Long, here we go. We have another situation here that we had in the women's match. There's the line. Referee called the ball out, but Brendan Long says no, that ball was in. So when that happens, it is a replay of the point. Two, two, one. So we still sit at 2-2-1. Two, two, First serve here for Sincola. The ball server. definitely out. <laughs> Paddle of Sincola by a good five feet. Maybe four. Two, two, two. read it correctly just got too big with that take back on the forehand side two, two, one. so it's Rob Nunnery with the serve good hands from Sincola and that ball on the serve as well from Nunnery almost didn't look to come up not so two, sure two. something may be a little off attack there from Brendan Long and John Sincola. Nunnery able to reset the first two, but when Sincola gets two, on two, top one. of that last one, it's not coming back. Server. Yeah, Long missing that one, but a much better start from them today compared to what two, we two, saw two. yesterday. Side out though here. So it's going to be Rob Nunnery with the serve. Two, two, one. Got it, got it, got it. 
server. Bit of hesitation from all four of these guys right two, now. Two, two. Bit of a feeling out process, it seems, going on here in game one. But we've seen all four of them play to know that the fire fights, the aggression, it is coming with these four. That's a tough ball for, to, for Nunnery to play. It ball looks like it's going to go out as well. It was the off pace speed up that threw off the timing there, which created all the issues. A lot of the time with these guys are expecting that ball to come at a high, well, high pace. I mean, Deescu sliding nicely to keep him in that point. First on the backhand and then the forehand. Keeps a minute and Nunnery able to finish. Five, two, two. Big forehand. Unlike on the women's match that we just watched, Deescu and Nunnery playing together for the first time. It's a partnership that has worked out right so out. far. They've cruised their way through the winner's bracket here at the APP Vlasic Classic. But after this match, we're going to have mixed doubles. Two, five, and in one. that one, they will be on opposite sides of the nets. Look forward to that later this afternoon. In the meantime, Sincola and Long on to their second serve here. Two, five, two. Trailing 2-5. Two, yeah, good ball from Sincola catching Nunnery as he's still trying to come across from that Three, stack. Five, Gets it into the body. Nunnery getting on top of it a little too much. Oh, what a recovery Boy. from Sincola. I love how he came over and protected Long on the drop from Deescu. Yes, sir. And then gets back to his position on balance, paddle up, ready to go, and is able to finish the point. That mid-pace speed up from Nunnery. Just drops the paddle head down. He can shape it in any direction that he wants. Let's see him drop it down, shape it down the line over that left shoulder of Brendan Long. Oh, that's the pressure of Deescu right there because it looked like Sincola wanted to just flatten that out down the line. He sees Deescu coming for the urn and has to change the shot. Good hands from Nunnery, adjusting that ball off the net. A little unlucky for Long. Good move on the Ernie, but Seven, four, as one. that ball comes back, he's left out of position. You mentioned the different facets of Nunnery's game that he's showcased already here early in game one. He's had a lot of different partners in the last year, of course, training with some of the best pickleball players in the world. But he's been spending some time the last year in Hawaii on the island of Maui and got a chance to play pickleball, do a little bit of coaching with the likes of some of the best athletes in the world. We had Drew Brees, he said, came through, got a chance to play with Kelly Slater, the goat of surfing, and Adam Levine as well. So Nunnery working on his game in a lot of different ways. Makes him a very good partner. Well, living a rough life in Hawaii, right? I you know, mean. It's tough out there when you got to teach pickleball and, you know, rub elbows with some of those players and people. Well, the only downside is the travel back right, here exactly. to, <laughs> to be able to come to the tournament, right? Eight, four, one. But Nunnery and Diescu certainly showcasing a lot of talent in this first game of the men's doubles gold medal match. Yeah, good control from Diascu attacking both Sincola and Long. Giving different looks, making it so difficult to stay balanced. That's a great jump right there by Diascu in the middle. 
He read that early, stepped in with the forehand, put that ball away. Game point here. That was close. That was close. That one a little bit long. So they move on to their second server. Another shot here at game point. For Diascu and Nunnery. Not going to get it on that one, though. So side out. Sincola and Long with the ball back on their side. Four, ten, one. You see the reach of Diescu on a lot of those volleys that he managed to grab before they bounce. His dad, a member of the Romanian national basketball team. So gets a lot of that height, I'm sure, from dad. I was going to say, he must have been a short guy then. <laughs> Side out here. So Nunnery and Diescu with their third shot. Third game point on the paddle here for Rob Nunnery. And Such that'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Pulling strings right there. You saw both Long and Diascu flinch. Uh, sorry, Long and Sincola flinch. And that'll do it. Nunner and Diascu take game one, game two when we come back. Pickleball, baby. Have fun. We talked about Diascu's dominance in doubles so far this year on the APP Tour. And take a look at this medal count. Seven medals Diascu has coming into this week. Looking for a shot at two more of them today. He and Rob Nunnery one game away from winning it here in the men's doubles gold medal match. And then he will pair up with Alex Trong in mixed doubles to try and get a second one. Dayescu continuing to attack again, using his size to lean in, reach, punch that backhand. That backhand punch of his, such a weapon. Oh, nice resets from Nunnery. The attacks were good from Long, but Nunnery doing a fantastic job getting those balls back down below the net. Nunnery sending that response long. Both they ask you and Nunnery looking up at the sky, but they're more looking up for the speakers because right in the middle of that point, there was an announcement being made over the loudspeaker. Oh, just misses it. Tries to slide it down the line behind Long. So does John Johnson Cola. Excuse me, with the serve. One, two, one. Yeah, Sincola's all over that one, but getting a little too big with the swing creates a little one, too two, two. flat of a ball. Passes it on to his partner, Brendan Long. Long doing a good job to stay out of the kitchen on the back half of that point, making sure a fault doesn't ruin what was an important point for them. Two, two, two. Ties us up here in game two. Whew. When you lob it up to somebody like Diescu, he's going to make sure that you have to be on your game to defend yeah. it. And oh. look at that, Johnson Cola Impressed taking the ball, the ball <laughs> to the official because the overhead from Diescu is so strong, it actually dented the pickleball. Oh, big guy compressed it right there again. I was going to say, 
when he hits a ball like that, it's not coming back, and there's multiple reasons now because it's compressed on one side and flattened the ball out. <laughs> so we will get a new ball. We have a basket of pickle balls just off to the side of the court, ready should they be needed, and here we are on yeah, our second nice one. Nice move from Long. Good Ernie there. Here's the broken ball. Another look at that. <laughs> Even Sincola has to laugh. wide on that counter from Rob Nunnery. And a quick side out for Sincola and Long, just what they needed. Chance to take their first lead here in game two. And they have it, up 3-2 after that missed dink by Diascu. That ball's wide there too. So Long applying some pressure. It's more so the movement than anything else. Yeah, right now if I'm Deescu and Nunnery, I really want to focus on returning the ball too long, keeping him back because he's getting aggressive here on Sincola thirds. Again, right there, good job. Looks like you know what you're talking about. Five, two, Almost. Two. <laughs> I mean, he's the former <laughs> professional. He's our pro coach. He brings some expertise too, Jack. Ow. You do. <laughs> Next gen national coach, former pro yourself. It's a compliment. Well, thank you. Six, two, two. Brendan Long trying to continue to extend this league that he and Sincola have built up here. 6-2-2. Two, two. Oh, that was tough. The ball checked up right there. Long thought it was going to keep going wider where, where he could get that around the post opportunity. Let me see, kind of just check up. Doesn't quite get wide enough to create that angle. Good job playing defense right there, Sankola is. Again, Deescu stepping in on that front foot with that punch backhand. 2-6-2, two, six, two. Two, six, two, Deescu with the second serve. got himself in trouble right there. Is we've seen it a couple times this weekend where you're wanting to take this ball out of the air, but then he doesn't, and it's tough just getting one foot moving, the other one stays, and you're stuck. That ends a little 4-0 run that Sincola and Long had put together. You see Long re Kayescu now with the serve. Yeah, better exchange there for Nunnery and Diascu. They've been getting jammed up a little bit, but we're able to take those balls earlier and out in front, get a little bit of extension. That's uh, going deep from Diascu. Be a side out here, so Sincola and Long with another shot. Six, four, one. What an adjustment from Nunnery as he's sitting dead red on the backhand. That ball pops way up and he has to readjust. Six, four, two. Slap that forehand down. Nice early there from Diascu. And the firefight going the way of Brendan Long and Johnson Cola. Yeah, Diascu mishit that forehand. You see it right here. He just kind of slides off of it a little bit. Doesn't get a lot of pace behind it. Impressive defense from Sincola on those first two, but leaves the third shot short. I thought Nunnery had a clean Four, put away right one. there. Sincola dug it out beautifully. Up to a knee, just blocked it up. Yeah. 
472. Oh, he got it. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> Sincola having his partner's back, but then <laughs> sailing into the APP Blastic Classic logo the on ball. the next shot. The ball just Five, jumped seven, away two. from Brendan Long. I think he swung, he swung out so hard that the wind from his paddle blew it away. <laughs> that was wow. that was a massive swing from Long. Seven five one. Twice, one he made connection with, the other one he did it. <laughs> yeah, it's a good spot from Diasco. It's a tough counter attack for Long from that position. Anytime that ball's coming down and you're really accelerating two. up at it, you talked about it earlier, Dom. So difficult to keep that in the court. Come on! Oh boy, Deascu ends up standing straight up on that forehand, and that ball dumps into the net on the miss hit. Five, two. Well placed ball there from Sincola, right in between Diescu and Nunnery. Yeah, good use of the net right here. It's always nice when you can use the net to your advantage. Ah, oh, if only. If only you could do it every time. <laughs> if only you could do it every time. Timeout called on the court here in game two. John Sincola and Brendan Long have a ways to go if they want to come back into this and win the men's doubles gold. Not only would they have to win this game, they'd have to win another game to 11, and then they would have to win a 15-point game. So, or game 215, excuse me. So, Diescu and Nunnery doing their best to get back into this and win this one to end it in this game. If you like the way Andre Diescu and Rob Nunnery are playing, you can watch them again after this one because we have mixed doubles coming up next here at the APP Vlasic Classic. But this time they're gonna be on opposite sides of the neck. So it's gonna be Andre Diescu and Alex Trong playing against Susanna Barr and Rob Nunnery. Susanna coming off of her silver medal in the women's doubles gold you saw right here on CBS Sports Networks. Just a few minutes ago, Alex Strong, one of the up-and-coming players in pickleball. It's her first chance this year at a mixed doubles gold medal. Oh, the love off the tape. That's good, giving it right back. Yep. Next, very next point. Much needed side out for Deescu and Nunnery. Trailing. Good defense right there from Deescu and Nunnery is... Brendan Long going for the Ernie right there. Can't convert and finish. Six, nine, one. Yeah. Boy, come on. Little ricochet right there into the face of Brendan Long off of Sincola's paddle. Oh, chest. Ah, just the chest. Where? All right. Where? Seven, nine, one. <laughs> but. Uh, Great paddle control from Diascu and Nunnery there. It was, it was blocked. Ball called out here by our head official. USA Pickleball officials watching the lines here, the men's doubles gold medal match. Was out, but I can't see how he was blocked. His angle's coming from inside the line. So he's gonna see that foot, or could That's block him. Nice job by our aerial cam. Definitely giving us the best angle of that last shot. So ball was called out here. That's a very good overrule right there, but now it's the timeout from Sincola and Long because that's a very quick 3-0 run from Nunnery and Deescu, and they are back within one, looking to close this out in two games. Deescu and Nunnery, like we mentioned, with another match to play right after this, so, of course it. Endurance, not something. Oh, wow. 
what a point there from Rob Nunnery. I mean, just drops typi it. typically when you get up and you catch it and you get that ball off of the net roll, you just bump it back over. But Nunnery, that offensive lob up over the head of Long. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Nunnery with the court coverage and then you know the chest bump where his head goes into <laughs> into Tyescu's chest <laughs> Tyescu was asking for the chest bump and Nunnery wouldn't have any of it so here we are gold medal opportunity Let's go! not on that one though good stop there from Long Nunnery didn't fool him on that one. Second match point opportunity. by Johnson Cola. Yeah, Nunnery couldn't come back in and cover on that one. It was a slow developing around the post there too. Usually we see Dyescu come back with a little bit more aggression after that around the post. And Brendan Long doing what he needs to do to extend this game, extend this match. 10, 10, one. Ties us up at 10 all, still on their second, or on their first serve, excuse me. Okay. Uh, Dyescu yeah. getting big there, though, and that's a very hard ball to defend, as we saw earlier in this match. Sincola finding it out again. 10, 10, two. Tough, tough exchange there for Long. He put so much pressure on. And Nunnery and Long get a little chippy between the two of them. Another ATP there from Nunnery. 11, 10, 1. And here we have another match point opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Sincola ready for that attack from Diascu. Diascu came charging up. 11, 10, 2. And that will do it. Rob Nunnery and Andre Diescu. The match has been called, though. So it is Andre Diescu and Rob Nunnery taking home the men's doubles gold medal match here at the APP Classic Classic. PP Vlasic Classic is sponsored by Lexus, Experience Amazing, Consumer Cellular, and Franklin. Match, match point here on Championship Court. Gold medalists here are Andre Dascu and Rob Nunnery. Yeah, a little controversy here to end it, thinking that that ball potentially was wide. And we'll shoot it courtside. A.J. McCord is with Andre Dascu and Rob Nunnery. Take it away, A.J. The gold medalist here at the 2023 APB Vlasic Classic in men's doubles. The first time you guys have played this event together, but I would say it worked out pretty well for you. Rob, what is it about your both of your games that complements each other so well? Yeah, we just don't give many points up. So the opponents are going to fight for every ball, and we're just going to put a lot of balls in play and force them to beat us. And... We were able to, we didn't play our cleanest match today, but we were able to pull it out. 
You were able to pull it out. It was so fun to watch you guys this entire weekend. It is Mother's Day. Andre, I know you are the proud father of a few kiddos. You want to say anything to your wife back at home? Yeah, I definitely want to say Happy Mother's Day to my wife. Uh, I want to thank her for everything. Obviously, with me being on the road for so many weeks in a row, she's got a really tough job. So Happy Mother's Day. I love you. I want to wish a Happy Mother's Day to my mom as well. And I want to wish a Happy Mother's Day to everyone in the crowd here. The, the crowd in Cincinnati here has been very, very high energy. And we love playing in front of you guys. And really quickly, before we let you go get warmed up for your next match, from teammates to opponents, so how are you going to flip the script? I'm going to light this guy up in a second. But I, ha I have to also say, I couldn't get off this mic without saying Happy Mother's Day to my mom. She's in Europe right now. Had a challenging last year. She's been a rock for me. So love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Diasco, you want to respond real quick? Uh, yeah, I just want to congratulate Rob on the silver medal in mixed doubles. <laughs> and there you have it, fighting words from championship court. Let's get these guys their gold medals before they go at it. Congratulations to Andre Diasco and Rob Nunnery. Wow, I mean, no shorter words there for Diascu. He's already in mixed doubles mode, but congratulations to Rob Nunnery, Andre Diascu, your 2023 APP Velasic Classic gold medalist here for men's pro doubles. What a matchup it was. It was every They put it to them. They make their opponents make errors, and that's exactly what we saw as, as that game progressed and ultimately ended. And that was a fantastic men's doubles and women's doubles matchups right here on CBS Sports Network. Like you heard, though, the guys have already switched modes. They're going into mixed doubles next with their respective partners. So we're going to stream that live on YouTube. You can join us over there. But for Chad Edwards, Dominic Catalano, I'm AJ McCord. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Thank you so much for joining us. Coming up next, inside the PBR World Finals. Pickleball, baby. Have fun. Oh my goodness. Welcome back to live streaming coverage of the 2023 APP Vlasic Classic. Four gold medals handed out. One more yet to give. We are looking at the mixed doubles bracket presented by Vlasic and we have Alex Strong and Andre Diascu taking on Rob Nunnery and Susanna Barr. Strong with the first serve. Yeah. And Nunnery, though, finding a spot underneath Diascu's paddle, forcing a side out. Yeah, one. Uh, catching that one just off the bottom of the paddle. Zero, zero, two. Nice counter from Trong on the drive from Nunnery. She was ready for that one. Trong playing zero, zero, in her first mixed doubles gold medal match on this 2023 APP Tour. Pretty good partner to have in Diascu. Oh, Case no. in point. <laughs> oh, no. That's full <laughs> swing and miss from Trong. She did the scorpion swing and a miss, oh, but God. the face when, when Diascu got it back was even better. Yeah, that ball's deep as well. Nunnery missing a couple long. That's, 
I can't. I can't. Alex has swung three times. And missed. And missed. And, and Daescu, Andre's been there to back her up every time. Daescu, a veteran of playing in this mixed doubles gold medal match. Switching up partners this week. He has been with Susanna Barr. Found a lot of success there, but today, opposite sides of the net from both her and Rob Nunnery, who he just won a gold with in the men's doubles. Yeah, good coverage there from Daescu. He's going to step over and take a lot of balls because we've already seen that Alex is confused by the, the direction that Rob's creating with his paddle. Nice ball there from Susanna Bard on the line. Andre acknowledging nice ball right away as well. Bar and Nunnery looking to first their, put their first points up of this game. And they do it there. Well, and that's the key right there for Nunnery and Bar. They got to find Trong right now, right? And get the ball away from Daescu. Of course, easier said than done. And we've really seen Trong come into her own a little bit in this week of playing with Andre Daescu. Certainly first time that they've played together. So feeling out periods still happening, but expect them to find a bit of a rhythm here as we move through this gold medal match. Chong with the serve. And a good serve, a point there. Like I mentioned, Alex going her for her very five, first five, mixed doubles gold medal. She writes on the inside of her wrist for every tournament to stay me. She wants to remind herself to stay aggressive. Go right at the ball. Leaves it a little short there. But as she grows into who she's going to be as a pickleball player, five, one, two. a little reminder of what she's going for. Go <laughs> ahead. Okay. I mean, nice ball right at the body of Andre Deescu, <laughs> getting him moving in. I know exactly what Chad was going to say. I was going to say, great reach in, going right at the body of Deescu. <laughs> huh? so oh, yeah. Oh, just wide there from Nunnery. Seen it a couple of times on the backhand side when he really tries to unleash, he comes across the body. One, five, two. What a lob right there. I mean, you can't drop that in the corner any better. Eight ball corner pocket. Thanks, Stom. Two, five, two. Beautifully done by Susanna Barr. She's got the serve now. You won't say it. Oh, he changed it up on her. She was expecting heat, and Rob pulled the string through a changeup, and she double clutched on it. Just a little too big. A little bit of hesitation there as far as how hard he was going to attack as well. Strong and Daescu adding another point on the board though. Regaining a four point lead. And some luck from the net cord there for Rob Nunnery. Sorry if it was the best spot for the speed up there from Strong either. Both Nunnery and Barr still not really dialed in with their thirds, and usually both of them are relentless with great third shot drops. Come on! Come on! 
Nunner, he hit that one block from Deescu almost like a, a little inside he out, he right? He scooped it. Yeah. Dig from Deascu, keeping him in that point. Now we see it right here. That ball's actually behind him when he digs it out. There again, it lands in. Wow. Never give up on a ball coming back from Deascu. Won't work out well for you. Bar getting a little handcuffed right there on that drive from Dasku. We've had some great moments already here in game one of the mixed doubles gold medal match between Alex Chong and Andre Dasku and Susanna Barr and Rob Nunnery. Here is your Lexus Experience Amazing play of the day. Yeah, it was that get again from Dasku picking that ball up from behind his right foot. Definitely an amazing play right there. Again, keeping him in the point, and then Nunnery trying to do just a little too much right there, but right now off of that play and the side out, Trong and Dask who regain a four-point lead here. Alex Trong, the only one playing in her first match here today on Championship Sunday. Like I mentioned, Nunnery and Dyescu won gold in the men's doubles. Gold medal match, and Susanna Barr walking away with the silver in the women's doubles. One of these gentlemen going to double up on a gold medal for the weekend. And in case you're wondering, you're wondering, they switched it over immediately. As soon as they got into that post post game interview, they quickly flipped the script and said, "I'm coming right for you, bro." After they were teammates, frenemies. We'll go with it. <laughs> Again, not a well-timed speed up there from Trong. Susanna Barr knows how to take advantage of that. Goes right back at her. Four, nine, one. Trong doing a good job on that point, though. Not only with responding, but getting out of the way of one sailing long. You see Nunnery Nunnery thinking that it <laughs> potentially got Trong's ponytail as it went past. And like I said immediately switched over to We Are Opponents. Oh he had the angle he just hit it too deep. Take another look at it here. The ATP from Diascu, a perfectly placed spot. Susanna Barr cannot dig it out. Yeah, and it's the slower pace ATP from Dasker right there that makes it difficult to defend against. Game point here for Dyescu and Trong. Wow, a couple of nice gets from Bar. Taken by Andre Diascu on the overhead winner. That will get them game one of the mixed doubles gold medal match. Take another look at it here. If she doesn't get the lob up high enough, and Diascu just pounds that straight down into the ground with a nice angle, and it is game one to Trong and Diascu. 
game two when we come back here to Cincinnati at the APP Classic Classic. Welcome back to the APP Vlasic Classic Game 2 about to get underway in this final gold medal match of the weekend for you. Alex Strong and Andre Diescu taking Game 1 against Susanna Barr and Rob Nunnery. Barr with the serve to get us started in Game 2. top of the net for quite some time before <laughs> turned into an unfriendly role for Andre Diascu. No. You hear Andre Diascu yelling no. Strong leaves it and wisely so. Oh, wow. Diascu taking up three quarters of the court, if not more. Again, Chong, not the best spot there for the speed up. Tries to go at Nonnery, just sitting all over that backhand. Dayescu with the second serve. Off the paddle, he knew that was going to go a little bit wide. Side out here, Nonnery with the serve, 1-2-1. One, What 
what an overhead winner from Rob Nunnery. I mean, great hands there from both Nunnery and Barr stay in there. They were coming with an attack where Dayescu and Strong, but finally Nunnery able to put that ball away with a huge overhead. Good hands again from Nunnery. Getting that ball down to the feet of Trong. Three, two, one. Blossom. Oh, she laid it back. Got to get that hand out in front, that paddle out in front. And like you said, laid him back. Yeah, that paddle's cocked backwards, leading with that elbow. That paddle will drag. Barr trying to add to this first lead of her team in this match. Nunnery a little off balance on that one. Diascu sitting ready for it. Spot there from Bart. Chong a little off balance as she's trying to come forward. Takes a big backswing to to accompany it. That's great coverage there from Nunnery. Is he steps in the middle and he's protecting Bar on the uncoil so she doesn't get caught. Three, two, one. Dasku tries to go behind. Hitting that one off the edge of the paddle. Yeah. Escu is playing ridiculous right now. I thought three of those balls were going to Alex and they never got there. No. He's stepping right in front and taking pretty much everything. Two, three, one. Well, both Susanna Barr and Rob Nunnery know just how lethal Diascu can be in on a doubles team. Rob having just won the gold with him. Susanna having won mixed doubles gold with him. Last two tournaments. Good spot there from Barr. Rolling that one out wide to the forehand of Trong. that clinic we can take that clip of like 20 seconds and make a video on it Chad with how well the resets were from Barr and Nunnery yeah, Trump did a better job of clearing himself this time took a step to the right hit the backhand instead of instead of trying to go on forehand side Drops right on the baseline there. Better to be lucky than good sometimes. <laughs> Five, two, two. Oh, a little unlucky there for a nunnery. But some luck for Trong getting that one off the net court. Feels like it all shakes out even in the end for the most part. Pick a ball luck. Two, five, one. The fire fights that we are having so far in this match. A lot of fun. 
Yeah, too big of a too big of a take back there for Alex Strong. It's she's got to try to cut down on some of those swings. <laughs> you can't have double hit it, but Susanna Barr there, looking to clean things up off of Nunnery's miss hit. <laughs> Dyeski looking to the official for confirmation. You don't a juck. Four, five, two. <laughs> Sorry, I had an opportunity. That's good ball right there from Nunnery getting that ball just out of the reach of Andre Deescu, but they do answer, get two back. Five, four, one. I think Bob would have been better off letting that one go. There's a good speed up. Five, four, two. Nunnery and Barr almost stopped, which is good they didn't because they thought that ball might have getting, gotten Alex on the body or higher above the wrist. But no one recognized that. Good job of not stopping. If they would have stopped and it's determined it didn't. And that goes against them. Good use of his hot and reach again there from Diascu. Offensive time now. Little regroup action here for Deescu and Trong as Barr and Nunnery regain a two point lead here in game two. And we've noticed certainly Andre Deescu taking up a vast majority of the court, which he does as he tends to do with his huge frame anytime he steps onto the pickleball court. But if you're Susanna Barr and Rob Nunnery, you notice that, right? So what do you have to do a little bit better? if you want to try and take him out of it. Well, they've gone behind him a little bit more here, but in a controlled kind of scenario. Not trying to speed up behind him, but going to Trong maybe once or twice and then just dropping one in behind Deescu. And then Nunnery's trying to step in the middle right there when Deescu has to play that ball soft and trying to get in there. So again, dropping behind him is not a bad idea at the right time to keep him honest. Good spot from Diascu. Bar couldn't catch up to that one. She kind of gets stuck away from the line there. Once Nunnery's ball went out wider. here letting this point develop that one left short by Susanna Barr on the attempt at the cross court dink so it ties things up here in game two Not even like a come on, it was a little mini stare down from Barr. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, good counter attack right there. Going straight at the left hip of Alex Trump. Now, are you not able to catch up with that one as it kicked up off the net court? 
Hard to get on top of. That's a nasty return. Like, her returns are very hard. They got a lot of pace on them. The times those get her in trouble is when she's on a stack uncoiling. When she goes and hits that really hard, she has trouble filling in behind. Not much else to say about that one except Dayescu's hands are pretty much on point right now. Tough to test them. Change of pace, yeah. right? Barr didn't hit that with everything she had, and the ball dropped a little bit. Seven, seven, two. Ball was just wide. Dayescu played that all the way on the opposite sideline. Trong had to step completely back away from him to let him play that ball. Eight, seven, two. So it's Bar and Daya or Bar and Nunnery, excuse me, with the serve here. And building on the lead that they started creating here in game two. Well, that's the nunnery we've seen all week is him being aggressive like that and keeping that ball in. It's time to bust out the hoses because we've had plenty of firefights today. And how about this one? The Vlasic firefight of the match. Talk us through it. Yeah, I mean, Diascu, like I was saying, it's hard, to, it's hard to test his hands right now. He's getting big. He's all over the kitchen. And he's just so short, so compact, so quick right now. And then you saw the big... Overhead, put away. Dumb's, dumb's done. AJ just brought out the hoses. Love it. Absolutely love it. So Susanna Barr and Rob Nunnery did make their way through the winner's bracket. So they are trying to win this one to force a decisive game three. If Alex and Andre win this second game, then we will go to a game to 15 since they have come through the consolation back track bracket or the back draw. I was trying to say both those yep. words at the same time, which isn't always recommended. Bracket, right. bracket draw. I, I feel you. <laughs> Hence the forehead. <laughs> So Nunnery and Barr kind of stepped it up a notch. The last few points, they're anticipating much better. They're dialed into the point. The energy is a lot higher. Sets them up for a game point here in game two. Nunnery with the serve. Well, Nunnery was there. And Again, when hitting that ball so hard straight down, you think it may bounce hard and back and fast. It kills it when it hits the ground and Nunnery was ahead of it. Seven, ten, one. Little miscommunication there in the middle, both Trong and Diascu going for that ball. It sails long and wide, putting them on their second serve. Trailing by three. Oh, nice point. <laughs> Paz fired up over that one. You can see the veins popping out in her neck after she goes behind Diascu down the line right here. Just a really well-placed ball. And I'm going to say it this time, same one. <laughs> and she's laughing at herself, shaking her head, knowing you had such a good moment followed by that. that. 
not ideal. But still a chance to close this game out. Rob Nunnery with the serve. And and Nunnery's ball sitting just a little too hot. So it's a side out here from Trong and Diascu. Diascu going to get us started with the serve. Oh, that is, honestly, that may be the first third miss he's had in two games. Well, you got to think, he's covering so much court right now. He's going to get tired. He's going to break down. And like you said, AJ, it's the love off the net court. It giveth and it taketh right there. Another game point opportunity here for Susanna Barr and Rob Nunnery. What a placement there by Rob Nunnery coming up on that ball. Doing a great job to get them this second game of the APP Vlasic Classic Mixed Doubles. Take another look. Yeah, you see Nunnery take a quick step up right there. Trong's trying to slide to the right to clear the backhand, but just opens up a hole. What a battle we have here in the Mixed Doubles. We're going to head to a game three when we come back to Cincinnati. The crowd ready for it. We'll see you soon. save time when we buy and book online at DiscountTire.com. Which means more time Wait, for... Check. Kyle, it's Pickleball. Every time. Zero, zero, two. Get 30% shorter average wait time when you buy and book online at DiscountTire.com. It could all come down to this. At the 2023 APP Vlasic Classic Mixed Doubles Gold Medal Match, Susanna Barr and Rob Nunnery winning game two. So if they win this game three to 11, they are your gold medalists. If Alex Strong and Andre Diescu can get it done here, they force a championship tiebreak game to 15. So it's the same scenario as what happened in the women's. The team coming out of the constellation bracket which was Barr and Fudge, one game one. Now it was Trong and Deescu, one game one, but then answered to make it all one apiece. Yeah, good move there from Nunnery. Going right into the body of Deescu, just kicking off the paddle. One, zero, one. Clipped the tape a little bit right there. And it just threw Deascu off just enough. Susanna Barr and Rob Nunnery with an early lead here in game Two three. 2 0 1. Second serve. 2 0 2. Coming all the way over and leading that side of the court wide open. Diescu knows to take advantage of that. Yeah, Diescu anticipating it this time. No, 
countering by kind of missing the, the high five there after. But good spot going to the left shoulder. Trong by oh my. Nunnery and Susanna Barr getting involved. I just think that Trong had no choice but to hit it because it was just right on top of her. Good hands again from Diascu. Goes into the right hip of Nunnery. Alex Strong leaving that one short, forcing the side, excuse me, giving a point here. Suzanne Barr and Rob Nunnery. Nunnery again with the serve. Yeah, a little flat there from Barr. Saw the paddle, the paddle face close off. Alex Strong with the serve, not sure if you could hear it over the broadcast, but her parents in the audience this afternoon. Pretty sure that was her dad, John, yelling at her to stay mean. Somebody in her support group, which, as I mentioned earlier, that's a reminder that she writes the inside of her wrist for every match. And nice ball right there from Rob Nunnery in the quick side out for Bar Nunnery. 3-0-1. Wow, are you serious? I mean, that is just reading a point right there is Deescu going for the Ernie, and that's the time where Barr's gonna lob, and he goes, she goes right up down the middle and over the top of Trong, and it is a perfect lob winner. Take another look at it here. Susanna Barr just knows how to place those lobs so incredibly well. Great experience she's bringing to this team with Rob Nunnery. They're sitting on a 4 nothing lead in this timeout. Doing everything they can to win this game to 11 and bring themselves home the gold. Susanna Barr, somebody who's won mixed doubles in gold the last two APP Tour stops. It was with Andre Diascu, but she and Nunnery worked their way through the winner's bracket well. Trying to make it a three-peat. Teescu could make it a three-peat as well. Somebody Four must zero. win and somebody must lose. Four That's my hot one. analysis for the day. You're welcome. Second coming of Confucius is <laughs> <laughs> I almost said get her a hose. Oh my goodness. AJ's line of the weekend, and we love it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, nice speed up there from Nunnery. Disguises it well. Chong never moves her feet to come over and, and slide to that line there. whole conversation within that point. Nunnery saying he was going to, or Susanna Barr saying switch. Nunnery saying no, no, no. But by the time that happened, they were already on the opposite side. Stayed in the point well, though. Ooh, I think that ball may have been going out if Nunnery doesn't get in the way of it. Little run, little momentum, little rhythm coming together here for Alex Strong and Andre Diascu on Alex's serve. 2 5 1. Yeah, good timeout here from Nunnery and Bart. Missing, missed a couple of easy balls. Yeah, good time for it. Got to slow that momentum of Trong and Deescu down right now. 
as they're feeling really good now, scoring three in a row. So 3-5, the current score for Augstrong and Andre Diescu. Diescu, a fixture on Championship Sunday. Let's learn a little more about him. See what makes him so special to play with. And look at that around the post. <laughs> now you're just getting a highlight package here of Andre Diescu and how big he can get and the versatility he has with his shot-making ability. And that has got them right back in here in this third game as they got in a hole 5-0, but have kind of dug their way out and now back within two. Wasn't ready for that one. Good reach in from Diascu, elevating that speed up. Gunner, very aggressive with his bounce call right there. Certainly didn't want Bar trying to hit that one. Strong dig there from Alex Strong. Makes this a tie game here in game three. Oh, what a ball there from Nunnery. Again, that's twice he's done that on a little let court. Ball drops in and he speeds that up right at the body of whoever's in front of him. Nunnery was really late setting up on that one. Ball was almost on top of it by the time he decided to take the paddle back. And then a miss up. Really quick side out for Barr and Nunnery. No points off of that one. And a few too many errors creeping in right now. Finally finding the feet of Alex Strong there. Again, Nunnery with that little flick close to the net, Chad. Yeah, that the elevated ball right there, if you let it go, it's gonna land in. It takes time to come up and get that ball when you're anticipating that it's going to be a firmer ball at your waist. Good drop, good angle there. But again, also the pressure of Nunnery coming in hard on the crash, on the drop from Barr. So timeout, looks like. Oh, end change, excuse me. End change because six. So we're going to change ends here in game three as we go to 11. In this one, as Susanna Barr and Rob Nunnery can get the win here, then it will be a gold medal for them. So they just have to be the first one to 11, be win this game to 11 here. And if Alex Strong and Andre Diescu can come back and win this game, then we're going to go to a championship tie break, which is a game to 15. And that, of course, is because we're playing a double elimination tournament here. And so Strong and Diescu would have beaten Barr and Nunnery one time. Got to do it again if you want to win the gold. So you always want that end change on your terms here. Um, you know, getting to six first, you got serve in hand. But a good job by Trong and Daescu is they were down 5-0 to get this within one. Yeah. 
good counter from Barr. She speeds it up on the forehand side, but again, it's about what you do after that speed and initial speed up, and she jumps back to the middle and closes that out with the backhand. Yeah, excellent drop and follow that from Nunnery. That is a not very happy Andre Deescu right there. No, understandably and visibly frustrated with him and Alex Chong trailing by three points here in this game three. Meanwhile, Barr and Nunnery just three points away from winning the gold here at the APP Vlasic Classic. So timeout used here. If you're Chong and Daescu, what are you talking about? How are you getting back in it? I mean, honestly, you've got to you've got to try to keep Nunnery out of the picture right now. And I kind of mentioned it earlier with Daescu that he's going to get tired. He's going to break down. Coming from men's doubles, and now he's he's pushing so hard here and covering so much court. If if they're going at Nunnery or, or giving those easy balls where Nunnery can really can control it, go behind Daescu and then go at Trong. They're in trouble from here on forward. Eight, five, one. Nunnery with the serve, 8 5 1. Bar going for that. Oh, it just kept spinning away. It skipped right off that line and spun right off that line, but that is not a bad lob from Barr because Tasker didn't have anything on the overhead. She's so good at that particular play. Well, I got a little, little twisted up there from how far Nunnery was going to come over. Good ball from Trong. Good attack from Trong right there off the drop. Huge backswing on that. Instead of staying compact out in front and punching that ball down, she got really big on the backswing and really wanted to put an exclamation point on that. Strong with the second serve. refusing to go away in this game three. Yeah, good spot from Bart. Just comes across that ball, gets it down at the feet with angle. Susanna Barr with the serve here, 8-7-1. And that's the pressure serve. So Barr hits a really hard serve. Every once in a while, she'll get a couple unforced errors on the return. There's one at a huge time. Good positioning from Daescu. Just stayed in the middle of the court, bought time for Trong to come across, and out, uncoiling out of that stack. Finding the feet and to make it more challenging, sort of right in between Bar and Nunnery to create just that split second of confusion. Yeah, that's a great spot from Daescu, finding that hole and a big side out. Did not want to give up that 10th point. And that's what can happen right there if Daescu's taking up too much of the court, which he was on that right side. Nunnery went 
too far. Felt the pressure of Daescu coming forward. Eight nine two for Alex's serve. Here on Championship Sunday, our final gold medal match of the day. Our final gold medal match of the day of what has been a fantastic Championship Sunday. Timeout called on the court. You see Nunnery and, excuse me, you see Trung and Diascu taking the moment to breathe. Take a look at everybody who has won today. Taking home the gold for the men's single is Yates Johnson. And then Salome Davidze, we missed her in Sacramento, but picked up right where she left off in Mesa with the women's singles gold. And then in women's doubles, Simone Jarjim and Paris Todd cannot be dethroned or unseated from their spot atop that gold medal podium. And men's doubles went to Rob Nunnery and Andre Diascu. point there. Andre Diascu and Alex Strong have worked their way all the way back into a lead here in game three. Wow. 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 A massive moment here on championship court for Alex Strong and Andre Diascu. They take two out of the three in this mixed doubles gold, which means because they came through the backdrop, we are heading to a championship tie break. Game to 15 when we come back. We save time when we buy and book online at DiscountTire.com. Which means more time Wait, for... Check. Kyle, it's Pickleball. Every time. Zero, zero, two. Get 30% shorter average wait time when you buy and book online at DiscountTire.com. The APP is presented by Yola, Franklin, Lair Rebe, and Pickleball United.
Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the APP Tour. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of the APP Tour. We save time when we buy and book online at DiscountTire.com. Which means more time Wait, for... Wait, check Kyle, it's Pickleball. Every time. Zero, zero, two. Get 30% shorter average wait time when you buy and book online at DiscountTire.com. The APP is presented by Frank. Level Up. Pickleball Magazine. And Sunday.
Welcome back to the 2023 APP Vlasic Classic. Taking a live look at Alex Chong's dad, John, in the crowd right behind our line official here as we get set for the championship tie break, a game to 15 to decide who wins the mixed doubles gold medal. Susanna Barr getting us started with the serve. Even though they don't get that right there, that's the setup they want. They get exactly what they're looking for. So to review the rules here for our game to 15, it happens because Alex Strong and Andre Deescu worked their way through the back draw and then won two out of the three games to 11 against Barr and Nunnery. So this is the game to 15. Winner to take home the gold. And that's such a good setup. And the last thing that Trong needs to do is speed that ball up back at par because then she's going to light up Dasku. And even though his hands are great, it's going to be hard for him to control that speed up. Got away with it right there. Dasku had an incredible block to get it back up and over. So it's Strong and Diascu on the board first. And Strong with the big finish there in a spot Susanna Barr couldn't quite get to it. Yeah, that ball got a little too deep on Nunnery's body right there, popped that one up. Two zero two, Diascu with the serve. Let's go! Let's go! Good forehand there from Bar. Diascu kind of ran through that drop just a little too much. Just out of the reach of Susanna Barr. That's a great cross court ball from Alex Strong right there. Zero two two. Too much on that one from Susanna Barr. Side out here. Alex Strong with the serve. Kisses the inside of that baseline. Yeah, good opportunity there from Trong to take it out of the air. <laughs> take it out of the air. Not giving any time to react. And that time it was Diescu with a well placed ball. And here we have a similar situation, I believe, to what we had in game one. Trong and Diescu finding their rhythm early. They'll have some work to do on the side of Nunnery and Barr. the net giving it a little love taking some pace off of it for Alex Strong to send that one right by the line right down the line 
5-0-2 in our game to 15. A good spot. If, yeah, if Nunnery can do that to Trong, she's just not seeing that ball really well. She's got to stay out of that. Continue to go cross court with Barr. She's doing that really well right now, staying in points. Second serve here for Nunnery. Read that one really well right there. Got to the forehand quickly. Big ball for Trung. And it's a side out, so Diascu and Trung with a chance to extend their lead here in game championship tiebreak. <laughs> in the tie, the <laughs> championship tiebreak. That ball just a little wide. Just long fat as whoa. Just got attacked. The cotton one? Huh? The cotton one? No, no, it was an actual bee. Oh. <laughs> we do have a spring in the Midwest here, so Cottonwood has been floating around the court all tournament long. Simone and Paris telling me before the interview got in their face a little bit during their match. Didn't affect them, obviously. But it is a presence here. Big forehand there from Bob. They need to answer quickly here, though. Down by six in this game to 15. Change ends at eight. The speed up there from Nunnery, but Trong was ready for it. Yeah, good counter there from Trong. Nunnery a little late on that second attack. A little confusion in the middle on who's going to take that third from Nunnery and Barr. And a quick side out again for Trong and Dasku, looking to add to their lead. leaving that one short, so no new points on those serves from Trong and Diascu. Ball back to Barr and Nunnery trying to dig their way out of this 06 hole. the credit for winning that as she should <laughs> I, I, I don't I don't have anything right now like that's just incredible but to ask you oh and that's exactly what you got to do if he's gonna pinch in the middle right there yeah I go behind a little bit but again he's still recovering well enough too to get there That's a good wow. ball there from Nunnery as he goes around the post with the backhand. Yeah, nice shape right here. See him get outside it. Oh, yeah. Shape it around. Two, six, two. 
clean in on the line. So Barr and Nunnery putting together their first points of this game, but just like that, a side out, and Diascu and Trong with a chance to extend their lead again. Big ball there on the backhand side from Rob Nunnery. Putting that away, got to hold another here though and get that serve and try and chip away at this lead. Six, two, two. Askew all over the kitchen line. Who got a little too big. Pedal got behind him. He gets a little slow with that. Big side out. No end change here yet for Trong and Dasku. Heat check right there from Dasku in the middle. Yeah, he just got a little overextended right there. Overextended, all you've got left is to flick the wrist at. Tough to keep that ball down. They ask you just reactionary right there. He knows it too as he takes a deep breath as he walks back, finds a hole behind bar. That dink going just a bit wide, so side out here for Trong and Diascu. One point away from changing ends. Bar trying to keep Diascu and Trong honest by forcing Diascu out wide and then speeding it up right at Trong. Well, when they can get him pushed back a little bit and get a ball that they can take out of the air, the middle's wide open. But it's got to be a ball they can take out of the air. with the point but quickly apologizing here right into the body of Susanna Barr his partner that he's won two gold medals with in the last he, two weeks he immediately apologized to her as I know they have a lot of tournaments lined up throughout the rest of the year he didn't want to make her <laughs> mad right now no not any more mad than she's already going to be trailing by five points here in this 15 point tie break like you mentioned, a few more matches ahead for Andre Diascu and Susanna Barr to be mixed doubles partner. Here's a look at the Discount Tire upcoming schedule of the 2023 APP Tour. Next, we head to New York City. The Boca Raton APP New York City Open in just a few weeks. And then look at that summer schedule. We're heading to Newport Beach, 4th of July weekend. Salt Lake at the end of July. And then... Middle of August, we round out our summer at the APP St. Louis Open. So a lot of really fun events coming your way on the 2023 APP Tour. If you're in any of those cities or want an excuse to visit them, we hope you meet us there. We're excited for the summer ahead.
Meanwhile, here in Cincinnati, we are in an end change. Andre Diascu and Alex Trong. About halfway to wrapping this thing up. Seven points. Give or take right now. Susanna Barr and Rob Nunnery doing everything they can to fight their way back in it. Currently trailing by five. It's going to be Trong with the serve. misdirect from bar and again it's so effective because you see so many players struggle with them because you don't know where it's coming off of her paddle even though it's not hit the hardest so it's a side out here nunnery and bar three eight one and bar leaving that one short needs to get a little bit more extension push through that one and again two balls right in the same spot off the tape there from bar and another quick side out here for Trong and Deescu they look to build on their lead here in our championship tie break game to 15 and do it on that on that one. Nine, three, one. Chong with the serve. Good spot there from Bart. A little fist pump to go along with it. Trying to get herself fired back up. Down by six. They need a big side out here. Oh, the defense from Trong and Diescu putting the pressure on. A little defense chant going here. Ten, three, two. After that impressive defense from Trong and Diescu. Oh, that's there for Trong as Nunnery was pinched in the middle. Three, ten, one. Good nice, roll. Yeah, nice ball right there. Just like you said, Chad, that roll, and that's that nunnery roll we've seen all week. Yeah, I've been a little surprised that he hasn't hit many Flixo rolls in this one. There's one. There's one. Did he hear what? you? I may. He may have heard you. Hey, may you hear me? Hey, I heard you. <laughs> Can't misspeak at all in this booth without somebody calling you out on it. It's a timeout called on the court. Pretty quick here. Bar and Nunnery just putting together a little 2-0 run, but this is what we always talk about. You guys always give us the good analysis of at what point do you call the timeout, especially when you're in a big lead like, like this, right? You're not going to wait until you go all the way caught up to tied. What do you think is the strategy here with calling the timeout now? Well, too many teams will let it go, right? They get two points and three points and four points. Okay, just, just one more, one more, one more. We're fine, one more, one more. And then all of a sudden, it's a one-point game. This is a good one. They were up 10-3. They scored two quick points to Bar and Nunnery. And Deescu wastes no time. Timeout. We're slowing you down. We don't want to give you any sort of roll. And we still have a big lead here. We just got to get two side outs, and we're fine. So that's what they're going for here. Rob Nunnery with the serve. Yeah. 
Good poach in the middle there and a little shake and bake from Nunnery off the third shot drop from Barr. A little flat there from Bar. Just missed a few of those into the net. Just missing that line right there, but nice run by Bar and Unry. Get back three points there. Meanwhile, Charong and Diescu sitting five away from that magic 15 number. Ooh. Good leave from Nunnery right there. I thought it was going to be a lot closer. The ball ended up being about five feet wide. Ten, six, two. That's a great move from Trong right there. Reading the drive from Diescu. 11-6-2, the serve for Diescu. Oh. Overly aggressive there from Chong, but they do get one back. Oh, what did that hit? Broke in the air? Yeah. And you could tell that it didn't bounce at all yeah. off that overhead from Diescu. Yeah, but it affected it affected the bounce. When that ball went up on the on the lob, Nunnery was like looking at it and going, wait, 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 before the overhead even happened. He's like, that ball's broken. And then when the ball got hit, it hit the ground and then just stopped. This would be the second time that We've had a well. The reason the reason being ball. is right. It's a little bit warmer. The ball the balls are the balls are sitting in the in the basket in the sun over there. Right. So with it being warm, with the ball with the with the ball being warm, when Diascu hits it straight down into the court, it compresses it. So right now there's a discussion between Rob Nunnery and our head official. The line judge on the backside, he agreed, but no, he saw it too. So we're going to replay the point, or replay the, yeah, replay the serve. Because after some conferring, it was confirmed that the Whoa. ball was dented, compressed in the air. It was it was compressed before he hit it. Right. That's why it didn't bounce after that. So because the ball, the, the integrity of the ball was was affected, and it affected the play, then we're replaying the point. Wow, I mean, there were two balls that Nunnery did not want Barr to play. <laughs> she did. Bounce it. Bounce don't. It. Don't. No. The last thing he can do is put a straight jacket on her so she can't swing at anything. So it's Barr now with the serve. Uh, Nunnery's falling back away from the ball on that drop. Tries to brush up the back of it, but with the weight falling back, there's just nothing to extend through. Bars there, but again, the backswing just a little too big. Eleven seven one. Eleven seven one. Second serve. 
Good spot there from Nunnery in the middle. That dink, cross court up, allowed to ask you to step in. that flick right there but doesn't finish so here we are Alex Trong and Andre Diascu currently sitting two points away in this championship tie break from winning the gold here at the APP Vlasic Classic Again, too big from Diascu. He's put the pressure on all day long. The gold medal point on the paddle of Alex Strong. Great placement by Susanna Barr down the line as Andre Diescu pinches middle. Big time shot at a big time. And she just flips this ball right down the line for the winner. Good flick, good finish there from Nonary. Questionable whether that ball is going to stay mm -hmm. in, but he didn't want to take any risks with it. 8-14-1 for Nunnery. Handcuffed a little, did Barr have some work to do here. Got to score in bunches, as every time it's a side out, it's a match point right now. Swing and a miss. <laughs> I was finishing what you were starting. <laughs> but she was a little bit ahead of it. All behind it. I think ahead. Again, Alex has played really well the second half of this game to 15 to keep them in it here. changed her mind I think yeah. three times now what she wanted to do with that ball they do get two points back but have to hold here twice championship point opportunity here for Trong and Diescu and that will do it Alex Trong and Andre Diescu win the APP Vlasic Classic mixed doubles gold medal the first gold medal for these two together first tournament playing together and what a big win it was we'll talk to them when we come back
having a tough time getting better? Our three-day Level Up Pickleball camps feature a low student pro ratio and offer personalised training from the best pros in the game. Level Up will take you full circle through the point building process by teaching proper stroke mechanics, positioning and winning game strategies. Each camper also receives a personalised before and after video, an instructional manual, product discounts and more. Discover how good you can be with Level Up Pickleball camps. Visit us today at leveluppickleballcamps.com. The ProXR Pickleball Paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. ProXR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. ProXR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. The APP is presented by Pro Exxon, C and D Nets, and Discount Time. Well, Andre Deescu and Alex Strong double dipping Susanna Barr and Rob Nunnery here and that is championship point, Chad, right there. Yeah, big backhand to finish it there for Alex Strong, but Deescu is the story of this one. Taking control and getting big all over the kitchen line. We'll throw it down to courtside to AJ McCord, who is with our gold and silver medalist. AJ, take it away. The final match of the 2023 APP Vlasic Classic, an instant classic here between these two teams. Congratulations to Alex Strong and Andre Diescu. We're going to get to you in just a minute. Susanna Barr, Rob Nunnery, a hard fought weekend. I know it was your first time playing together. What is your biggest takeaway? It's actually not our first time. First time this season. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> No, 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 no. We played most of the year together. My fault. First time since I've been here. Anyway, moving on past my mistake. Um, but, I mean, this was our first time uh, that we made it to Championship Sunday. And so, I mean, hats off to Andre and Alex. They played great. Um, but we, you know, we played well together as well. We've improved a lot. Sorry. <laughs> So, Rob, with it being the first time you two have made it to Championship Sunday together, what works so well about the two of yours games that you were able to capitalize on this weekend? Yeah, I mean, first off, thank, thank you, Susanna, for playing with me. You're a lot of fun to be on court with. Uh, she gets silly balls back, and it's fun just scrambling with her and playing. Um, yeah, I mean, we came out a little flat today, but hats off to Andre and Alex. They came out playing to win and put a lot of pressure on us, so... You know, we'll, we'll build off of it, but big, big props to Andre and Alex. Great job, guys. Let's get these guys their silver medalists. Congratulations, Susanna Barr and Rob Nunnery. Give it up for your silver medalists here in Cincinnati. <laughs> That's okay. It's the end of a long weekend here. Give it up for your silver medalists. Well done, Susanna Barr and Rob Nunnery. A pleasure watching you two play today. And speaking of a pleasure to watch play, Alex Strong and Andre Diescu, this was a hard-fought match. Andre, I don't know how you're still on your feet. It seems like you were everywhere, but Alex, you had some moments. What was the strategy of how you picked those? The strategy was to just go for our shots. Andre's telling me to take things, be aggressive, and that's my game, that's his game. So when we put it together, I, th I think it works out great. Um, he, he keeps telling me to try to put the balls away, and I'm coming in, I'm crashing, and they get the ball back. I mean, Susanna and Rob, they're great players, great defenders, great offenders, but I swear I am so small that I can't put the ball away. <laughs> But you put it away enough today, and Andre, put you <laughs> put away match point, exactly, but you were all over the place. What does it mean to you to win this mixed doubles gold? Oh, it means a lot to both of us, I think. Rob and Susanna are obviously great players. Susanna was getting everything back. Rob is obviously super strong, super fast. 
uh, very explosive on those hand battles. So we knew we had to come out swinging, you know, we had to play aggressive. That's why I was trying to cover as much court as possible, try to put some pressure on them. And I needed Alex, obviously, to every time to, they were coming down her way to just make a statement with a, with a counter, and she did. And she's the reason we won the gold medal today. So, yeah. What do you think when you hear him say that? I mean, it means a lot. Andre is the man on tour right now. It's an honor uh, to play beside him, and so I'm super grateful for that. But I had so much fun this tournament. Congrats to everybody. Um, thanks, Andre. You play great. <laughs> Congratulations to both of you. Ken, let's get these guys their gold medals here. Alex Strong and Andre Diescu are your 2023 APP Vlasic Classic Mixed Doubles gold medalists. Well, there you have it, Alex Strong and Andre Deascu taking home the title here in Cincinnati at the APP Vlasic Classic. Chad, they played incredible. Alex really stepped it up in that game to 15. That first half, you know, after that first half and they changed then, she really started to pick it up and, and really held her own. Yeah, and Deascu had started to, to slow down just a, just a little bit. Uh, because of, of how much work he had been doing. So it was it was good to see Alex step up there, finish off a couple of points. But, I mean, what can you say about Andre? He was just so big, so active. Um, tough to tough to get anything by him. Today. Yeah, he, he covered pretty much 85 90% of the court most of that match. He played incredible. And I know Andre said Alex is the reason they won today. Andre played super big <laughs> and played super well. Hats off to him as well. An incredibly impressive final match here at the APP Vlasic Classic. To cap off what was a fantastic championship Sunday, we gave out five gold medals, five single, five silver medals. And my goodness, clearly we've been talking all day about it because I'm all tongue-tied. Tongue <laughs> 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 Didn't oh, even boy. plan that one, but we had a lot of fun. Thank you so much for joining us at the 2023 APP Vlasic Classic. We've had a blast here in Cincinnati. We'll see you next time.